Magkaganito Bigla na lang Nagkagulo Ang, ang bulkan ay mag-alboroto Ang taghana Tila nananagya Bigla ang pagdating nitong pandemya Marami Gayang nagbago Matutuloy pa kaya ang Pasko Huwag, huwag kang mangamba Lahat kay kakayan Basta't nagkakaisa Ibayan ang loob At sa Diyos ay magkasal Pagdurusa natin na magtatagal tayo'y aahon tayo'y babangon pandemya lang ito Pilipino yata tayo nuloy ang Pasko Siglang tayo natin to Kaya pangako ko sa'yo Lahat ay kakayanin Basta't magkulong tayo Ibarang ang loob At sa Diyos ay magkasal Pagdusa natin Di na magkaragal Hanggang matapos itong inset natin sa araw na ito, di ba? And teachers, 
Before we forget, dapat selfie na ba kayo para may ma-post naman kayo as we begin our afternoon session. Pag hindi pa, eh, magsiselfie muna tayo. Teacher, kanina, I was browsing yung ating hashtag na Vincent2 Day 3. At grabe, nakakatuwa ang ating mga t-shirts. No, I Talaga, and I hope, please keep it coming kasi talaga makakawala ng stress and share Aside from these selfies, it just shows your creativity ng mga teachers natin. At alam mo ba, ang dami pa rin tayo matutugunan sa mga yes. speakers natin. At saka hindi so, lang yan, Sir uh, Mike, no? nakita ko din na meron tayong mga viewers na mga nasa hospital, nanunood. Ayun, o oh, nga eh. Si Sir, tutulad ni Sir Norman, di ba? Nakita na na nagdadayalis oh, siya oh, habang nanunood ng virtual inset. Kahit nasa oh, anong silang lugar, tutok na tutok po sila para sa ating virtual inset 2.0. Yes, yung iba gumagawa ng module o kung ano man ginagawa sa school, nagbibrigada, eskwela. But then again, nakatutok pa rin kayo dito sa ating virtual inset 2. Maraming maraming salamat po. Teka, kailangan natin ng MOV ngayong afternoon session. Yes, siyempre, hindi tayo papahuli para sa selfie time natin for this afternoon session. Kaya, teachers, ano pang hinihintay natin? Ihanda na ang inyong mga cellphones, ihanda na ang inyong mga posts, kasi ito ang gagawin namin sa oras na ito. So, teacher, ikaw muna. Okay, of course, una po natin post ngayon, okay na nga, since um, Bear Month. Diba pag sinabi natin Bear Month, it's all about love. Okay. Bigyan nga natin ng partner yung ating mga homeschool natin ngayon, no? Si Sir Mike at ako. So ngayon, ang gagawin po namin, kailangan po may nakaakbay kay Sir Mike or siya po yung nakaakbay, nakaakbay kahit sino po ah, at pwede rin po yung ako. Pero syempre, ikaw muna, Teacher Mary Ann. So, gigilid muna ako. Okay, bibigyan nila ako ng kaakbay. Sa ano ako na kaakbay, no? <laughs> okay. Ready na po tayo? Okay, at the count of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bigyan nyo nga po ako ng kaakbay. Ayan, thank you so much po. Susunod naman po natin, of course, ang napaka-pogi, si Sir Mike. Ayan. Hello ulit. Ayan. Okay, ngayon naman. Siguro, gato naman. Sige, kasamahan niyo ako. Maglakad tayo sa park. Sige. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Sige, picture lang kayo. Ayan. O, oh, isa pa. Ako pa yun naman. O, oh, ayan. Kaya rin, happy-happy tayo ngayong afternoon. Ayan, sige. Oh. Ang bigat mo pala, ha? <laughs> 4, 3, 2, 1. Ayan, happy-happy lang tayo. Yes. And you know what, teacher? May nakita rin ako na hindi lang siya individual. Meron din mga groupie. Yes. So lahat ng mga nag-school na nagpo-post ng group photos, kasama kami, maraming maraming salamat. Pasingit din naman kami. Okay, paano ba post natin dyan? Kahit ano rin, sir, sir. Kahit ano rin. Kahit ano rin. Oo, kasi pag gusto ko yung mga parang ganyan kali siya, gusto ko ganyan happy-happy eh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. One. Ayan. Thank you, thank you. So, huwag kalilimutan gamitin ang in yes. hashtag Vincent to day Again, mga teachers, ang pag nag-post po kayo ng ating mga selfie or certificates, do not forget to use our hashtag, hashtag Vincent to day 3. Yes. And also, teacher, I think this is a right opportunity for us para batiin ang mga nanonood sa yes. ating mga. Gusto mo bang simulan na? Okay, sisimulan na natin ang ating mga shout-out. Namumunod siya sa SDO Manoogan. Nangunguna po ang ating EPS ng Filipino from Ma'am Pam. Pinabati po niya si uh, Ma'am Sheila Molina. Ma'am Sheila Molina, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Of course, meron din po sa ating EPS ng English Department sa SDO Kaloocan. Pinabati po ni Sir DJ, si Dr. Christian J. Lagan. Of course, meron din po ang ating mga PSPS sa Kaloocan, Dr. Jovan Cornelia, and also Dr. Um, Archie Azucenas. Hindi rin naman nagpapahuli, partner. Ay, grabe naman, hindi magpapahuli si Sir Mark dahil meron siyang fans club. Saan na mga wow. chapter yan, partner? At least sa The Powell Norte chapter. Grabe. Ano nga po pa nga na grupo na yan? Hello, Badsnatics. Ayan, hello po sa inyo <laughs> sa The Powell Norte chapter. Mabuhay po kayo lahat. Yeah. So, yes, binabati ko rin nga po pala ang aking, syempre, ang mga kasamahan sa school. Sa General Emilio Aguinaldo oh, National okay. High School, sa STO Imo City, sa lahat ng mga co-teachers ko dyan. Hello po sa inyo lahat. Good afternoon with our ASDS, Dr. Rose Torres. Is, uh... SDS, Dr. Rose Torres, ASDS 
It's our prime inductivo and our very dear principal, Ma'am Lerma B. Peña. Hello po sa inyo lahat. At nanonood din po pala ang mga teachers ng Governor Juanito Rimulia Senior High School, SDO Imo City. Pinakabati po kayo lahat. Siyempre, hello din kay Sir Melvi. Of course, hindi rin magpapahuli ang iba pang fans club ng ating mga taga Dev Ed Tech Unit, no? Kay Sir Jeff Natics from Legaspi Chapter. Mamaya daw po ibibigay sa inyo, Lala Moves PD, ang inyong mga kanya-kanyang merch. Wow, may merch, no? At hindi rin magpapahuli ang Neil Natics ng SDO Nueva Ecija. Alam ko, teacher, may naalala ko sa may importanteng tao ba sa Division ng Nueva Ecija? Management. Ah, okay. Sa ano po? Sa division ng Nueva Ecija. Okay, okay. Pag sinabi natin SDO Nueva Ecija, natatanda ako sa ni Letter N. Okay, kailangan natin siyang batiin. Okay, binabati ko nga po pala ang nari dito na taga SDO Nueva Ecija, si Sir Neil Arvin. Hi! Hello, Sir Neil! Shoutout nga po pala sa PGT or Teachers Got Talent 2018 team Maasin, Sir Lionel, Ma'am CJ, Sir Dennis, Sir Edmond, Sir Richie, Sir Leonardo, Maria Clara, IS Teachers, and SDO Maasin City. Hello po, nalito sila before sa Turn of Teachers Got Talent. Ayan, salamat. Sir, speaking of yung school mo kanina na sinabi mo, pinabati ko din yung mga nasa school po namin bago sila high school po. Namumunod na ng aming department head na si Ma'am Lil Tarayo and of course, ang isang pang department head na napakagaling at napakaganda. And congrats po ma'am sa iyong comprehensive exam. Nakapasa siya, si Ma'am Mirna Pacheco. Oh, congratulations. And also, ang pinaka-competent and maganda rin po namin principal, Dr. Marisa B. Feliciano. Ma'am, good afternoon po from Ma'am Pampuyan. Yes, si Tutor Jessica, nagpapashoutout din po sa mga teachers sa Abuyod National High School, Teresa Sub-Office, SDO Rizal. Maraming maraming salamat, Tutor Jessica. Okay, pinapagreed din po natin si Ma'am Anna Bautista, Department Head Teacher at Dr. Ludisito or Ma'am Principal of Amparo High School together with their English Department. Pinabate ko rin naman po ang um, si Sir Dominador Angeles, Principal ng Gregorio de Jesus SDO Caloocan from Ed's Lupto Jr. And of course, hindi rin magpapuli ang Emong Natics na magpapuli wow. ng yan ang chapter. Sa ang chapter ko ba yan sa Metro Manila? Dahil talagang um, kanila uh, lulusupin ang Metro Manila. Yung Grabe ka, abang-abang naman yan. Siyempre, yes. happy birthday baby Rice from Tito Emong. And also, I'd like to shout out Kuya Mike. Sa Jonna Mirasol from Malitlit Elementary School, Santa Rosa, Laguna. Hello, uh, my cousin Uzi, all the way from Antique Sibalo niya. Kababayan ko yan. Binabati rin natin ang mga nanunood na principal. Grabe yung mga principal. Kahit medyo busy talaga sila talaga nakatusok dahil. Ma'am Flora Chope and Ma'am Angel Det Chavez, good afternoon po sa inyo. And of course, ang bagong bawang talent agency. Wow, na sa po natin ng um, mga artista na guro. Anong talent agency yan, partner? Ano ba yung PATA? Yes, eh. Anong sabi ng PATA? Okay, kung sinabi po natin, PATA, oh. eh, agency yan po ang Pamela Amor Talent Agency. Oh. Kung gusto niyo po siyang um, um, makita, you can PM her and send Gika. Sarat yes, po okay. So, at the moment, ititigil muna natin ang ating shoutouts. Marami wag po tayo yung time mamaya. But do not worry. As much as possible, as many as we can, we are going to read your shoutouts. Okay? So, ayan. Teachers, alam nyo ba na ang topic natin ngayong oras na ito ay isa sa inaabangan ko? Yes, grabe. Ako din inaabangan ko yan. Kasi parang hindi ako makapaniwala na through that, meron tayong uh, maipapasok natin siya sa landscape ng teaching and learning process. Yes, kaya naman huwag na tayo magpatupig-tupig pa para ating, sa ating session today because our topic will be all about game-based learning using Minecraft Education Edition. Okay, Teacher Mike, pakilala na nga natin ang ating mga set of speakers sa oras na ito. Yes, for our first speakers, she is a degree holder of Master in Education specializing in Administration and Supervision in March 2009 and completed her doctor's degree in March 2014. Hindi lang yan, Sir Mike. Currently, she is serving David for more than 10 years, having a current designation as Master Teacher 1 in Science and Technology Education Center in the Division of Lapu Lapu City, Region 7. She is also an Educational Technology Specialist in EdTech Unit ICTS, DepEd Central Office, and currently hands on with a game based learning. Kaya naman, talagang alam niyo tong topic na to, no? Truly! Opo, ang ating speaker po ngayon, she fuels her passion in teaching by utilizing the ICT 
formula and never get tired of making difference every day. Wow! Our second speaker for this topic, he is one of the EdTech specialists of ICTS EdTech Unit from the Division of Lapu Lapu City, Region 7, Central Visayas. Currently, he is the game-based learning project program lead. He has always been a sought-after speaker in the division, region, and national training and workshop on ICT literacy, teaching with technology, Office 365 empowerment, and remote teaching and learning, and game-based learning, especially during this time of pandemic for teaching and non-teaching personnel. With the hard work, he achieves great things in the field of ICT integration. Of course, he is an achiever himself and has the following accomplishments. He won the following like best success story of a teacher during pandemic in the division of Lapu City in 2021. Best research display during the first regional research summit in 2018 and best ICT innovation for governance during the first regional ICT summit 2017. Not just that partner, he is one of the designers, developers of the offline module cell phone application in his division and a lot more accomplishments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. For more than 11 years, his teaching principle is he never minds if success doesn't always translate into financial rewards but invariably satisfies his need to impart his wisdom to others for the glory of God, who is his Lord and personal Savior, the greatest master teacher of all. His tagline is empowering teachers and learners in using technology for God's greater glory. Teachers, hindi lang dalawa ang ating magiging speaker ngayon, kundi pangatlo, sino yung pangatlo natin, partner? Alright, so she, our third speaker, she is a key player in the ICT development of the education landscape, with her vast range of experience and qualifications. She is one of the country's Microsoft Certified Trainer, Microsoft Education Ambassador, Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, Microsoft Certified Educator, Microsoft Office Specialist, and Certified in Azure Fundamentals and Azure AI. She has also been awarded for the Google Certified Educator Level 1 and 2. Grabe. He is also an EdTech specialist who joined the team in February 2021. As one of our most hardworking team players, she handles episodes of e 2 Live, MTV, MLB Ilocano, and Pinoy Gen Z Digital Citizenship. She is also one of the project leads of game-based learning using Minecraft Education Edition and recently recognized as Minecraft Champion and Minecraft Esports Leader. Grabe, tatlo natin speakers. Sino-sino na nga ba yan? So ladies and gentlemen, our speakers for this topic, Ms. Rubelin Pastrano, Ms. Gwenny Lapin, and Ms. Brenna Tagliba. All right, an amazing and awesome afternoon to everyone. Hello world, hello Philippines. So good afternoon to all of us. So I know everyone is excited, right? So uh, right now uh, we are in a world uh, so focused on achievement and success. We know that, right? And it's important to know how play is at the foundation of everything we do. Together, we will transform the way we teach our children. And of course, learning through play is necessary and not just a fun add-on to the academic process. I am Minecraft champ Robilyn Tabardo Pastrano to talk about the theories and principles of game-based learning that's precisely true teammate Minecraft Trump Rubilin as a father I tried to teach my child with books but she gave me only puzzled looks I tried to teach my daughter with words but she just passed by me often unheard despairingly I turned aside how shall I teach this child into my hands she put the key come Play with me, Dad, she said. I am Minecraft champ, Glenny Ilapi, to talk about how to activate, download, and install Minecraft Education Edition in your devices. Yes, I strongly agree to both of you, teammates, Rubilin and Glenny. Play is our brain's favorite way of learning, and 
play is not a break from learning. It is endless, delightful, deep, engaging, and practical learning. So it's the doorway into the child's heart. I am Minecraft champ Glenna A. Tagibao to talk about getting started on Minecraft Education Edition and eSports. Uh, I could still remember when I was a child, uh, I don't need more things. And the best one I can uh, have is when my parents get down on the floor and plays with me. And currently, I have been doing uh, with my two sons, spending time with them through play. Not just ordinary play, but something educational using Minecraft Education Edition. Yes, 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 teammate Glenna. I am so proud that all parents like you and all the teachers who spend quality time by playing and at the same time learning with their kids. All right, so uh, with that, this afternoon, our team, the GBL or Game Based Learning, will present a licensed and safe platform for game-based uh, learning. So this Minecraft Education Edition is an open world game full of possibilities where players can create and build, solve problems, and of course, uh, with this, we can explore amazing worlds. So let's learn how Minecraft is transforming education this afternoon. Minecraft Edition is an immersive game-based learning platform that drives creativity, collaboration, and problem solving. Educators in more than 150 countries use Minecraft across the curriculum. This year, DepEd envisions being part of this educational transformation. All right, so disclaimer only, we are grateful of Line Learning Solutions who allowed us to use their training deck on our July and August sessions, which featured the Minecraft champions of the four pilot divisions. And today, we will feature some of the outstanding outputs of some of the Minecraft champions. And now, we will show you a glimpse of our July and August sessions with this short video clip created by our very own Microsoft program lead, Sir Mark Anthony Hamisal. Enjoy! So much, Sir Mark Anthony Hamisal, the program lead of Microsoft. Uh, he was the one created that video. So thank you so much. Of course, this time we will proceed, proceed to the pre-test so that we will be having an idea uh, what are the tools inside our Microsoft Education Edition. So here's the first question. 
Uh, but before that, let me remind you, you have only 10 seconds to answer this question. And you can write the number and the correct letter uh, as your answer in our comment section. Okay, so let's get started. Here's the question number one. What do you call the characters in Minecraft that are not controlled by the player, but can perform commands and deliver dialogue when players interact with them, making them excellent tools for creating amazing narrative and gameplay experiences in Minecraft? A, book and creel. B, non-player characters or NPCs. C, chalkboards or letter D, slate. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And the correct answer is Yes, you are correct. It's letter B, non-player characters or NPCs. Congratulations to all of you who got it correct. Okay, so for the second question, so which of the following Minecraft Education Edition tools below show players excellent way of documenting stories? adding pictures taken by the camera in the portfolio book and editing the book text. Is it A, book and quill? Letter B, non-player characters or NPCs? Or letter C, chalkboards? Or letter D, slate? So you have 10 seconds to answer. 10, 9, 8, 7. I can see a lot of answers now. 4, 3, 2, and one. So the correct answer is letter A. It's book and quill. So congratulations to all of our participants who got it right. And question number three. What device is compatible with Minecraft Education Edition in the current time? A. Chromebook, PC, iPad, and smartphones. B, Android phones, PC, iPad, and Mac. Letter C, smartphones, iPad, PC, and Mac. And letter D, PC, Chromebook, iPad, and Mac. All right, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is... Letter D. Congratulations to those who got the correct answer. Yes, yes, yes. Let's move to question number four. What is the general term which refers to the special blocks in Minecraft Education Edition, namely slate, poster, and board that allow players to write and display text in their worlds? A, book and quill. B, non-player characters or NPCs. C, chalkboards or letter D, slate. You have 10 seconds to answer. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And the correct answer is, yes, it's letter C chalkboard so congratulations to all of you who got the correct answer for number four all right so for number five how can you access the minecraft education edition is it a go to www.minecraft.education.net and sign in your office 365 account or b go to www.minecraft.net minecraft.education.net and sign in using your DepEd email account. Or letter C, go to www.minecraft.education.net and sign in using your personal email. So you got 10 seconds to answer. 9, 8, 7, 6, 
five. So I can see a lot of answers, varied answers. There's letters A, B, and C. So let's see the correct answer. is letter A. You have to go to www.minecraft.education.net and sign in using your Office 365 account. So congratulations! Okay, so thank you everyone for your active participation in our pretest. So everyone enjoyed and learned some tools built inside our minecraft education edition so may i give you all the minecraft may i give you uh minecraft champ rubilin pastrano to share the information about the theories and principles of game-based learning all right thank you so much minecraft champ glenna Tagibao. yes uh today's learners as we all know are digital natives whether we like it or not they are in that scenario nowadays and of course they have that new profile they grew up with digital technologies different learning styles and new attitude to the learning process and higher requirements for teaching and learning so we will define the difference Okay, or we will uh, recognize the difference between game-based learning versus gamification. Okay, and we need to clarify these two terms. And when we talk about gamification, it is the use of game thinking, approaches, and elements in a context different from the games. Using game mechanics improve motivation and learning in formal and informal conditions. Gamification is an integration of game elements and game thinking in activities that are not games. What it does mean is that you are taking motivational elements from games, such as giving a badges, or achievements and incorporating them into the learning experience to encourage your learners to perform a specific behavior. An example of this is a web-based training application would be awarding learners badges for completing sections of training and posting their scores to a leaderboard. This action encourage learners and keep them engage and there are some benefits of gamification uh, like uh, it encourages existing behavior change behaviors uh, it motivates our learners of course and it provides immediate feedback and gratification and for us teachers uh, it we can track progress and effort on the other hand we have game-based learning so what this mean all right what this means so game-based learning is using games to teach specific content this can be through a game created for education or non-educational game for educational purposes uh, this present a structured end-to-end -end approach which immerses learners in a simulated experience using game mechanics and a great way to reinforce learning so with this game-based learning uh, it gives students the freedom to fail and focuses on using the game to reinforce the learning material and provide context what i like with game-based learning is that it's a safe place for all learners to commit mistakes or to fail yeah but they can try again and again until they learn something out of it and also uh, in essence any variety of game encourages the player to practice learn from their mistakes of course and gain many important skills 
So using games to teach can do the following, like uh, it can provide creative context for content, engages and encourages learners, and it also allows for peer-to-peer -peer learning because we encourage collaboration here in game-based learning. Teamwork is another thing that we need to consider. And of course, it provides instruction in a new more interesting and fun way. Yes, it should be in a fun way. Learning must be fun. So it allows for social interaction and building collaborative skills. While gamification and game-based learning are buzzwords in the training room and are sometimes used interchangeably, they are totally different. Gamification is using game-like mechanics, such as badge and leaderboards in your training. It is not playing games or using games to teach, whereas game-based learning is using games to teach and reinforce educational objectives. Incorporating either one of these elements into your training is a sure way to catch your audience interest and teach them your material. And we teachers, our audience are our learners. So there are some examples of gamifications like Kahoot and Quiz Is, and examples of game-based learning are Minecraft Education Edition, and another example is Lego Robotics. Now, take a look of this uh, slide. All right, so, as you can see here, the board uh, on the left, on my left, okay, is similar to a checkerboard or chessboard, but with a twist. So this is an example of game-based learning. As you can see, all even white tiles on the board have a mathematical symbol, which dictates the operation to be used. So we can utilize this uh, activity in math classes, right? So with that, uh, it will be used when a player's piece captures the opponent's piece. So it has also labeled uh, zero to seven on its side to determine the coordinates of the piece. And each piece of the player has corresponding values depending on what type of damage is being played. So both board and damage pieces are mostly made of thick cardboard or illustration board. So for our information, we should be proud as a Filipino. Why? Because Damath was invented by Jesus Huenda, a teacher in the province of Sorsogon. Okay, so Sorsogon, Philippines. So we should be proud of this uh, teacher who had encountered problems in teaching math, but uh, utilizing this one, this traditional teaching method, is of great help. All right, now, on this slide, we can see here, uh, game serves as a tool that allows learners to play while they learn. Now, which is which? In gamification, uh, it is used where some teachers use it to reward and recognize students and behavior. But in game-based learning, it is used where teachers leverage games as vehicle for learning. Yes, it's possible that a game-based platform can be utilized for our uh, for teaching and learning process. So with that, I will be showing the Minecraft six principles of game-based learning all right so as you can see here uh there are things that we need to learn and there are six principles that we need to consider all right let's have this one the first the failure dynamic all right who among us here who are not scared of failing right of course all of us wants to succeed, all right? But failing in game is not the same 
as failing in life. Stakes are much lower. So we should be grateful. So in certain games, players must fail many times to succeed. Some levels simply aren't solvable until you've spent a few games locating the obstacles. In this way, failing many times allows players to get a little farther each time they try. Because in Minecraft Education Edition, learners have the freedom to build and build and build. And if there's something wrong here, as you can see in the picture, the building that they built was on fire. What a loss. And you can see also dead crops, right? But to fail early, yes, it might be we fail often, but with that, we can have more learning, even in the real life scenarios. So this principle teaches students to take risk and put in the hours to practice more. Let's practice more. Okay, that's the first principle. Moving to the second. All right. The flexibility dynamic. Um, early video games provided only one way to win. Like you had to meet a predetermined series of objectives in a certain order, run up the ramp to find a key that unlocks the door, which opens a window and so forth. There are games like that, especially uh, the uh, earlier versions, of course. So if you got stuck at any point, you couldn't finish the game. So it's very frustrating. Uh, later games such as Mario 64 and Grand Thief also provided a sandbox environment of quiz to, compl to complete and places to explore in whatever order the game the gamer chose. So it was possible to finish the game in your own unique way, taking a personalized path to the end. Uh, this is to find ways to build this uh, same kind of flexibility in your own curriculum. So here we are trying to uh, present to you a new platform, which is Minecraft Education Edition, wherein some courses follow a set syllables and reward students based on their progression through linear set of object objectives, okay? We are guided always with a set of objectives. So uh, here in Minecraft, the learner will try building multiple paths to success into their own course, considering offering a main quest of storyline that leads students uh, through a primary content, but offer abundant many quests that allow students to investigate certain paths further they are not boxed our learners are not boxed their creativity will be fully developed so that's the second uh principle the flexibility dynamic that means to say learners have some rooms to try and try until they can have the best output because the platform is very flexible and the third uh principle the construction dynamic so students want to feel engaged in creating something that has purpose minecraft allows open-ended building opportunities in which gamers set their own goals and freely express their creativity in the process of building something difficult and worthwhile so with that uh, we can find ways to engage students in our own classroom by reaching out to the community at large or by challenging your student to create an initiative that they care about. So even if we are in this pandemic, as long as we have internet connection, we have devices, we can allow our learners to experience this awesome thing. All right. And the fourth principle, 
the situated meaning. Wherein students learn new vocabulary words by experiencing them within game situations. So, majority of subjects teach students some abstract notions like chemistry or history or math. If you will explore more in our Minecraft Education Edition, you can see that there are uh, all learning areas are included here. It's not just math, it's not just science, it's not just about ICT, but we can uh, have some other learning areas. So introducing or reviewing the concept in the game is much more powerful as games allow students to experience the concept in the context and allow for demonstration of students' knowledge. So that's the fourth uh, principle, the situated meaning. Moving on to the fifth, system thinking. In this principle, students learn new uh, vocabulary words uh, at the same time. And there are some system that we can have here. All right, there's order here. Okay, and you will get to know more about it as we go along with our topic this afternoon. Okay, and... Uh, sixth, building empathy. I like this one. I like this principle because here, uh, games have the power to bring players together to achieve common goal and can also raise awareness of global or local issues by experiencing those topics in a virtual world. Even if they are just playing or learning in a virtual world, they can have also that... Um, experience similar to real life experiences so it's like putting themselves in the other shoes of other uh, human being all right so with that players must communicate or work together and have the ability to practice empathy in the form of an avatar Yes, you can get to know some avatars here in our platform and begin to understand others and their reactions. And uh, to wrap up my discussion, yeah, uh, there are six principles of game-based learning. Okay, first, the failure dynamic, wherein uh, it's okay to fail early. And sometimes we may fail often, but along with that, there are more learning, especially for our uh, learners, right? Second, the flexibility dynamic. It provides multiple paths to success, okay? Uh, our learners are unique. They have that multi-intelligences, I believe, of course, and I know uh, we should give them the opportunity to have their own way leading to different or multiple paths to success, regardless of their uh, condition, of course. Uh, it must be inclusive. It's for everyone. And third, the construction dynamic. With that, uh, learners can build something that matters they will create their world according to their interest according to what they are good at and fourth situated meaning they can learn new ideas by experiencing them they will immerse themselves in the platform as is they own their own world and of course it's applicable to real life uh, Sati. And fifth, system thinking. They will learn how all pieces fit or can be fit. And sixth, building empathy is bringing players together to achieve a common goal. And we teachers, we have our common goal for the, com for the development, total development of our learners. All right. So with that, 
That's all about the introduction of the game-based learning along with its underlying principles. And I know you are all excited on how to activate, download, and install Minecraft Education Edition. May I call in my teammate, Minecraft champ, Glenny E. Lapping. Take it away, Sir Glenny. All right, so yes 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 thank you so much for that uh introduction minecraft champ ruby lynn so i believe that this time our participants learned already the six principles of game-based learning so we are so ready now and very excited on how to use minecraft education edition in our classroom so this time i will i will now share my screen and it's there already the instruction on how to install Minecraft Education Edition. So now that you have learned about the principles of, uh, behind the game-based learning, or what's the difference between game-based learning and gamification, I know that you are so very excited not just to know this approach, but as well as to experience it yourself. So this time, let us begin by experiencing game-based learning in our devices. Bye installing Minecraft Education Edition in our devices and activating it in using our Office 365 or Microsoft 365 accounts. And now let's watch this short tutorial video created by the Microsoft Philippines Program Manager, Ms. Grace Ko. Hello, Sir Glenny. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, share. All right, all right. All right. So, uh, in a while, we will be listening, of course, to the uh, one of the Microsoft Program Manager. She's no other than Miss Grace Ko, and of course, uh, she will be telling us. And information and how to activate, how to download, and of course, how to install our Minecraft Education Edition. And you will also learn some information as to the requirements. All right. So please watch this video and listen attentively. Hello! Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Ako si Grace, isa sa mga program managers sa sumusuporta sa Microsoft Philippines. We hope you're enjoying the session on Minecraft Education Edition. Minecraft is actually one of the tools that the Department of Education is currently rolling out to enhance the teaching and learning experience in the classroom. In the next few slides, I will share to you on how to activate, download, and use Minecraft Education Edition on your devices. Narito naman ang checklist sa mga kailangan nating i-prepare before using Minecraft Education Edition. Ang Minecraft Education Edition ay available sa following devices. Windows 10, either desktop or laptop. Mac devices, iPads, at Chromebooks. When we access Minecraft Education Edition, we must ensure that we have a stable internet connection because we would need to connect to the internet whenever we log in and access the application. At ang pinaka-importante, kailangan meron tayong active na Office 365 account na ipinagkaloob sa atin ng Department of Education. For example, isa ako mag-aaral mula R11. Ang format ng aking Office 365 account ay one.dinacruz at r11.dep.gov.ph. Kung sakasakaling wala pa kayong Office 365 account at kayo ay isang guro, maaari po kayong magtanong sa inyong Division IT Officer. At kung kayo naman ay isang estudyante, Maaari kayong magtanong sa inyong advisor or school ICT coordinator. Tandaan, ang inyong Office 365 account ay ang nagsisilbing lisensya nyo para magamit ang Minecraft Education Edition. So ensure na wag na wag nyo kakalimutan yung passwords nyo and keep your accounts active. Okay, so quick tutorial on how to install Minecraft Education Edition kapag kayo ay gumagamit ng desktop or laptop. 
So all you need to do is go to the website education.minecraft.net slash get dash started slash download or ito naka-flash sa ating screen. At doon ay makikita niyo yung options for you to download. Kung kayo ay gumagamit ng desktop or laptop, make sure na ang pipiliin nyo ay yung Windows at click the download button. Pag napindot niyo na ang download, may lalabas sa prompt sa inyong desktop asking you if you would want to install Minecraft Education Edition. Just click on the button install and automatically magsisimula na ang installation ng Minecraft Education Edition sa inyong mga devices. Kapag natapos ang installation ng Minecraft Education Edition sa inyong devices, ay may lalabas na pop-up wherein kinakailangan nyo mag-sign in gamit ang inyong DepEd Office 365 accounts. Kapag successful ang inyong sign in, ay automatic namang lalabas ang start screen ng Minecraft Education Edition at pwede nyo na itong gamitin. Para naman sa mga gumagamit ng iPad, narito ang paraan kung paano ito i-download sa inyong iPad devices. Hanapin lamang ang Apple App Store. Sa Apple App Store, i-click ang search at hanapin ang Minecraft Education Edition. I-click ang install. Pag na-install na ang Minecraft Education Edition sa inyong iPad, mag-login lamang gamit ang inyong DepEd Office 365 account. At ngayon, pwede nyo nang gamitin ang Minecraft Education Edition. We encourage you to download the app, try it, explore, mag-download kayo ng worlds at i-practice natin kung paano nga ba maglaro ng Minecraft Education Edition. Hopefully, magamit natin ito sa ating pagtuturo at pag-aaral. To know more about Minecraft Education Edition, you may check out the website education.minecraft.net. We are looking forward to see more DepEd Minecrafters. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat! Alright, so thank you so much, Miss Grace, for that very informative instruction on how to download, install, and activate our uh, micro Minecraft Education Edition. Now this time, let's go back again and simplify that instruction. All right. There you go. Okay. So, there you go. Okay. So, once again, thank you so much, Ms. Gritch, for sharing such comprehensive video presentation on how to activate our uh Minecraft Education Edition using our Office 365 accounts. And uh, I know that our Minecraft champs in the, the four pilot divisions are now busy assisting and mentoring their teachers and learners in installing Minecraft Education Edition in their devices. Keep it up, Minecraft champs, and congratulations. So here is a recap of the steps given to us by Miss Grace. So number one, let us go to education.minecraft.net. So to download the installer, link shown on the screen is posted in the comment section already. You can just click the link. It is there in your comment section. If you're watching live via Facebook or YouTube, you can see it there posted for easy access on the installer of Minecraft Education Edition. All right. Now, if you're able to click it, it will redirect you to a website. And once again, that website is called education.minecraft.net. But that link that I am giving to you right now is directly for the installer of Minecraft Education Edition. Number two, once there,
click download now. Of course, we know that we don't enjoy the same we don't enjoy the same internet speed. Okay? So if you're there already, click that button that says download now. Yes, once again, we do not enjoy the same internet speed. So for those who are having difficulties, laban lang mga sirs and moms. As they always say, patience is a virtue that carries a lot of weight. Because for your information, Minecraft Education Edition can be used online and, guess, offline once installed in your devices all right so once click once you click download it will download the installer here so once downloaded what you will do is simply click the installer to install and just follow the instructions click yes and next and next and so on and so forth and then the last one will be install or finish and once installed you can see the starter screen something like this all right for those who were able to follow the instruction given yesterday it was shown yesterday another one today and another demonstration today. So I do hope that many of us are uh, having this starter screen already. Because later on, we will have demonstration. All right, so number four, it will ask, it will, there is a pop-up and it will ask us, to enter our Office 365 account for in order for us to sign in. So once again, number four, we have to sign in using our Office 365 or Microsoft 365 account. All right, so I'm giving you enough time can follow this instruction. There's only four instructions as a summary of the video given to us by Miss Grace Ko. All right, once you successfully sign in or activate activating the application of Minecraft Education Edition, in other words, you are now successful and you can now use Minecraft Education Edition in your devices something like this all right so congratulations if you are successful in installing and activate activating minecraft education edition there is a line here that i highlighted it says kid tested and teacher approved all right so thank you so much for that quick uh steps in giving us uh, how to download and activate our Minecraft Education Edition application using our Office 365 account. At this time, I will turn you over to, uh, to my teammate, Minecraft Chump, Glenna. Minecraft Chump, Glenna. Hello, Ayan. I'm back. So thank you so much, Sir Glenny. So for our next part of our presentation, so let's all showcase the, the following uh, materials that was presented before in our July and August uh, episode. So may I also call on Ma'am Rubilin Pastrano to be with us? Yes, yes, yes. Of course, excited na tayo mga ka para may pakita din sa ating buong uh, kaguruan sa bansang Pilipinas yung mga 
outputs ng ating mga Minecraft job from the four divisions. Ano-ano ba ang mga four divisions na yun, mga kapatid? Alright, so mm -hmm. first we have the school's division office of Pasig City. Pangalawa? Yes, we also have school's division of Tagum City. And of course, and we have from Isdiko, Zambales. And for Zambales. Yes, mm -hmm. last but not the least, we have SDO Leyte. Yes, so yes. uunahin ko muna yung mga uh, lesson plan no? from the elementary level. And this time, the elementary level will be represented from Team Zambales or SDO Zambales. All right. So lesson plan muna kasi nga 'di ba uh, mga ka teammates, it's so hard to create a material using our game-based learning platform Minecraft Education Edition if a teacher is not properly guided. So it's basic for us to have our lesson plan. So ito yung Minecraft Education Edition Showcase of Output from the Pilot Dep at ISDO. So I would like to say thank you sa um, nagpapakita po at nag-share na kanilang material. Ayan, si Sir Jerson Piagsi, Teacher 3 from Namatakan High School, si Ma'am Annabel E. Talaw Urbano, Master T Teacher 2 of San Narciso Elementary School, and Ma'am Ivy Rose Pastor, Master Teacher 2 of Hanjin Integrated School. Alright, so, pakita ko yung lesson plan. Madali lang to. Two minutes lang po. Alright, so, I hope we can also get an idea on how to create this awesome lesson plan. Alright, there you have it. Now, the lesson is all about speed, distance, and time. And... Below here are the offers from Isdio Zambales Champions. So, in this world, you will learn how to calculate speed. Oh, pwede pala mag-calculate ng speed using Minecraft Education Edition. Alright, so uh, we can also calculate distance and time. And one of the essential skills you need to understand and apply in your daily life. So, this is... Uh, important also that we can apply what we have here in Minecraft in real life scenarios. So this topic is uh, taken from the quarter three, week five. So of course, we can explore the material here. All right. So of course, there are guiding questions and there are some activities for the pupils to perform. So here to begin, pupils will load the attached single-player Minecraft world, the world of speed, distance, and time. So there are some activities like uh, in the first one, observe Santa Cruz, uh, Candelaria, Masinlok, Palawi math models. They have math models here. And second, Another model, the model of IBCSS, and third, the model of SSCS. All right, so there are some also performance expectations being uh, written here in the lesson plan, like the pupil was able to answer all the activities and build a poll that will represent the mastery gain from the lesson. And the pupils was able to use the concept to analyze the correct answer. All right, so here, let's start. So the teachers who created this lesson plan utilize the tool in PC or the non-player uh, uh, things here in Minecraft, of course. So imagine what would the roads be like if all the drivers do not have the knowledge about speed, distance, and time. So this is very applicable to real-life scenarios. Imagine a race wherein the organizers, the players, and the people around do not have the knowledge about speed, distance, and time. Or knowing little or nothing about the mathematical knowledge, skills, and the use of it in our daily lives bring chaos. So this is just one of the content inside the NPC in Minecraft Education Edition. So, of course... Uh, it's so hard to put these things in our 
mind if you yourself have not experienced yet building in minecraft education edition what i'm showing you right now is a glimpse uh, on how the teachers uh, plan their lesson it's very detailed the advantage of having a detailed lesson plan is that the teacher can copy paste the content here in the lesson plan right there in the uh, actual platform in minecraft education edition so this is a math lesson very detailed so for more details about it you can contact or you can collaborate uh, the owner of this material or you can contact us and how we can help you yeah because our time is very limited here to show you everything this is just a glimpse of what things that we can possibly do all right from the lesson planning itself very detailed so like this one here uh like look for a vacant space where you can build a mini village composed of four structures or buildings like house store bakery garden basketball and etc with different distances so it's very very comprehensive lesson plan and very timely also as you can see here uh the learners are asked to write at least two COVID reminders in their mini village so very timely okay and that's all about uh in showing you a glimpse of this lesson plan and this is an elementary level so let me give you to sir glenny for a sample for junior high school all right so thank you so much for that very uh, clear example of our minecraft education edition integration for the elementary level minecraft champ Robilin. At this time, you will now see a showcase output from one of um, the Minecraft Chump of the four, uh, from the four pilot uh, schools divisions office. At this time, we will feature the high school or the secondary level. All right, so this is the actual lesson plan. It's all about Araling Panlipunan 10. All right, so I will just run through uh, this lesson plan. So this is the actual lesson plan. So with all the parts. All right, so the and and this one is from uh, Mom Antoinette Velia Corte, our Minecraft champion from SDO Leite, and this is now her actual demonstration of this lesson during our my tech talk saturday habits game based learning uh, ses uh session august 14 2021 so it's all about minecraft history and culture so that's the topic about uh the one that we have showcased uh, in the my tech talk webinar so they showcase this one about history bring the history and culture curriculum alive so that's a very nice tagline bringing the history and culture curriculum alive. we know we know that already that sometimes uh history class you no know, uh, feels like uh boring to some kids all right so let's bring give life to our uh history subject or aralin palipunan subject we bring it alive using minecraft education edition and how our minecraft champion uh, did it here is it so here is shout out to mom antoinette villa corte uh, and congratulations mom uh, your output is selected by the team to be presented today as one of the best outputs for the four pilot divisions so your capstone and this is now how mom antoinette presented this one about your capstone world matalom matahom all right, from Matalom National High School, Leyte Division, Region 8. Congratulations po. All right, so this is the learning objectives. Pamantayang pang nilalaman, the content standard. So mga mag-aaral ay, mag ay may pag-unawa sa sanhi at implikasyon ng mga lokal at pandaigdigang isyong pang-ekonomiya upang mapaunad ang kakayahan sa matalinong pagpapasya tungo sa pambansang kaunlaran. At ito naman yung 
pamantayan sa pagganap or performance standard na ang mga aral ay nakabubuo ng pagsusuring papel sa mga isyong pang-ekonomiyang naka-aapekto sa kanilang pamumuhay. So I'll go on. The most essential learning competency uh, about nasusuri ang dahilan, dimension, at epekto ng globalisasyon. Alright, so and then subtasks of learning competency. There you go. And uh, let's proceed to the guiding ideas or essential questions and the activities of the students and uh, also the integration and uh, what are the PPST objective that's being uh, integrated here. So we have economics and arts. And here also we have uh, subject integration from math and English. And uh, of course, no, so this is a well-rounded lesson. Uh, we have also here from integration from Filipino, Tulang Lampas, and uh, the student's activity on analysis, and the abstraction part, the application, and of course, their pagtataya or evaluation using Microsoft Forms. All right? So there you go. This is the sample world. And also the takdang aralin. So gawain seven Minecraft world. So subject integration this time. One, five, objective one, five, and seven, particularly on ICT. So ito yung uh, one of their outputs or pagtakdang aralin. Panuto gamit ang Minecraft Education Edition gumawa ng Minecraft World na nagpapakita ng kasaysayan at epekto ng globalisasyon sa Matalom Leyte dahil sa buwan ng Agosto, ipinagdiriwang ang History Month at ASEAN Day. Kailangan may integration sa tema ng mga ito ang inyong proyekto. Gumawa ng screen recording ng inyong output. And here's a sample of their output. Of course, in order for us to rate the student's output, you need to use rubric. And that's wonderful. No? So, Ma'am Antoinette used rubric sa pagmamarka. And of course, what are the 21st century skills being developed here? We have citizenship, collaboration, creative thinking. And here are the student minecrafters congratulations guys we have minecrafters john anton lapasanda uh, daniel kyle kilesti and alfred a gola and you will be amazed by their output i hope the sounds can be heard and there you go guys uh, just please notify me minecraft champ rubilin and glenna if there is audio Can you hear the sound? Wala pa ka. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. So a short glimpse only. I will reshare that one. Sayang naman, no? Yung output nila at least mapakinggan at makita talaga how they were able to uh, complete the task. The world was created by their teacher, Ma'am Antoinette. And very wonderful because the world, that, that world actually was the lesson plan. Alright, so kasabi nga ni Kaprobilin, uh, copy-paste lang po yung mga instructions. You will see only a bit. I will share it to you. You will see that one in the Minecraft world. Paano ba nila ginawa yan? So gamit yung mga blackboards later and it will be demonstrated by us. Okay, so I will share my screen muna. Alright. And Okay, project my screen once it's shared. Not now, please. Okay, there you go. Sige. Thank you for sharing my screen. <laughs> All right, so let's play this screen once again, this uh, video once again. Magandang araw sa ating lahat. Ako po si Alfred A. Gula, isang grade 10 student ng Matalom National High School, Leyte Division. Ipapakita ko po ang ginawang Minecraft World para sa performance task na ibinigay ng aming guro sa araling panlipunan na si Mrs. Antoinette L. Villacorte. Ang most essential learning competency All right. ay nasusuri ang dahilan, dimensyon, at epekto ng globalisasyon. Ayun. Ang mga layunin naman ay ang sumusunod. Una, na ipaliliwanag ang kahulugan ng globalisasyon. Pangalawa, na bibigyang diin ang pagkakaiba ng limang perspektibo o pananaw tungkol sa kasaysayan ng globalisasyon. Pangatlo, nakagagawa ng Minecraft World na nagpapakita ng kasaysayan 
at epekto ng globalisasyon sa matalong later. Alright, I will post this video right here. So if you noticed uh, that the, the objectives are there, uh, it is shown in the Minecraft world where the student will enter because it's a sort of a quiz or a, a quest, no, a quest or a challenge you know, for, the, for the students to complete. So here is a Minecraft version of the teacher. If you can see that, that's Mom Antoinette Villacorte as an NPC or the non-playing character. So if you will click uh, Mom Antoinette, Mom Antoinette is, a, is the teacher. May binigay ng aming guro sa araling panlipunan. Na... All right, so that one is their teacher. So once the student click on the teacher, the teacher will say something. In other words, the teacher will give instruction virtually. So the students will learn on their own pace. So that's why uh, in the Minecraft world, the student can learn independently. All right, so... I will skip some parts of this one so that you can see their outputs right here. Epekto ng globalisasyon sa matalong later. Isa sa mga pangyayaring lubusang nakapagbago sa buhay ng tao sa kasalukuyan ay ang globalisasyon. Sa larangan ng politika ay nagkakaroon ng mabilisang ugnayan ng mga bansa. Mga samahang pandaigtigan sa ito ay nakamit ng no expedition mula sa Guam. Ang paglalayag na ito ay puno ng panganib at adventure. Nagtulak sa kalakal ay ang... It was said that the Spaniards once saw the flaming red of the fire trees that dotted the shores of Matalong Beach and the scenic Kiniga Island, and asked the natives the local dialect for Hermosa, or beautiful. The natives answered, Mataho, or Matalo. This was the origin of the town's name. All and right. on April 5, 1521, 500 years ago, Antonio Pigafetta, the chronicler of the first circumnavigation of the world, recorded in the Magellan. Hey. Uh, see, there you go. Once the student click on the Pigafetta, uh, Pigafetta showed something or uh, will tell uh, the learner will see something, something like this, an information about uh, Pigafetta. All right, so, and if we will skip some parts of this one. All right, As in their last part, watch this, how they incorporate sounds. And how they make this as, uh, alam nyo ba yung mga cup, yung parang promotional video of their uh, city no? or place. All right, so there you go. I will just keep some part of this. All right, so if you can see that one, that's very excellent output from our students. So uh, congratulations, Matalo Matahom, Leyte Division, Region 8. So I'll turn you over right now. So we have seen an output from the elementary and high school. This time, uh, you will also see an output a lesson plan and students output from the senior high school minecraft tribe my minecraft child uh glenna take it away cup yes yes so we have also a minecraft uh, lesson plan from uh, a showcase for senior high school science so this is all about advancing science exploration using minecraft so this is an example of a lesson plan showcase from San Rafael Vocational High School of Division of Zambales. So a, a little bit of a run through. So the content is all about bioenergetics. And then the content standards, the learners demonstrate the understanding of the cell at the basic unit of life. So this was presented. Uh, and dito na yung mga activities. What, uh, what will be the teacher uh do we will be doing here in in the lesson plan and 
This was presented by Sir John Mar Molina, a teacher three of SDO Zambales Region Three, a Minecraft champion and a mine a Microsoft innovative uh, educator. And ayan, uh, pre-present nga po ito noong uh, one of our episodes in our My Tech Talk. So that's all for the senior high school. So for our next part of our uh, presentation, we will be discussing how to get started on using Minecraft Education Edition. And we'll be presenting you some of the demonstrations of what are the different uh, tutorials that you have to, to start first before uh, having our Minecraft Education Edition. So for the demonstration, so this is how. For example, on how to move on Minecraft Education Edition. So these are the Minecraft basic controls for the keyboard. So we have escape button. So that will be your pause. W for forward in the keyboard. We have letter A, side step left. Letter S, backward. Letter D, side step right. And then the space bar is used to jump. Okay. So for the basic control for the mouse, for left click, you will use that if you're going to mine. The right click is used to place or to interact. And uh, our move mouse if you want to look around. So for a demo video, so you you watch this. All right. So for the interaction, I hope it's not load. Uh, it's not loading for interaction. So we have this. So all of these demo tutorials available po ito sa ating uh, Minecraft once you, you already installed this. So yun po talaga yung advice po namin sa lahat ng mga gustong uh, matuto or to get started with Minecraft Education Edition to please start it with the demo tutorial. So we have six. So we have number one, yung movement kanina. And ito nga pangalawa, we have the, the interaction. How are you going to interact with the different entities in the Minecraft world? So that's how. May mga nakikita rin naman po tayong mga hints kung ano po yung mga gagawin po natin dito. Right? So disclaimer again. So we think uh, our our partner line learning and development for our materials and so that's a this is a demo presentation of how we're going to interact with uh, NPCs and the different materials in the Minecraft world so it's very important also to read the, the instructions being placed in the world like for this, you have to open the levers. You have to click the levers to, to open doors. And so use right click. So moving forward. All right, so right clicking if you want to open the chest. And if you want to interact with the NPCs, you have to right click so that you can read the informations or uh, the instructions being placed by your teachers in the NPCs. So as completed. So that's all for our uh, interaction demo tutorial. Then we have also break and play. So how will you do that in Minecraft Education Edition? So our mouse and keyboard, so na present ko na yan kanina, as it is. So escape for pause, we have 
1 to 9 in the keyboard. So you can use that if you want to choose items from your hotbar. And then letter Q if you want to drop item from your hotbar. W, A, S, D, and letter E if you want to open your inventory. And letter C if you want to start your code builder. So those are the basic keys na kakailanganin ninyo or basic controls natin in Minecraft Education Edition. Okay? Alright, so for the demo tutorials, so it's not loading. So, gaya nang sabi ko, once you upload, uh, uh, you start Minecraft Education Edition, this is all available also in your, yan, matagal lang po mag-load. Okay? So, this is a video tutorial of Break and Place. So, gaya nang sabi namin kanina, make sure you go to www.minecraft. Uh, .net and then sign in your Office 365 accounts. Okay. So that's, yan. As you can see, nakita nyo naman kanina kung saan makikita yung mga different tutorials to get started. So this is a place and break tutorial in Minecraft Education Edition. Okay. So as you can see here in, in the tutorial, so May iba't ibang materials na pwede nyong gamitin to break something. Kasi syempre, meron iron dito, meron wood. So, iba't ibang materials yung kakailanganin ninyo to break. Right? So, for, for wood, you have to use your wood planks to, to break a wood. Easier. Yan. So, going through. So, this is a brick. So, para po mas mabilis ninyong mabrick ang isang brick, you have to use an iron pickaxe. So, that's the activity. And then, the next activity is how are going to place something in our world. So, from, as you can see, the hot bar, we have different flowers there. So, just select. You can use the numbers in our keyboard then. Just press right click to place them. So that's it. Uh, activity completed. And if you want to, to go further, nandito naman po lahat. Nandyan naman po, built-in na yan sa inyong uh, Minecraft. Once installed na yan sa inyong mga gadgets. Okay? So moving forward tayo kasi yung time natin. So for our next tutorial, may I call on Sir Glenny? To, to continue the different tutorials that we have. Sir Glenny, nakamute po ata tayo. <laughs> All right. So, dami ko okay. sinabi. All right. Congratulations <laughs> for that very uh, clear you know, uh, demonstration of using uh, some of the tools in the Minecraft world. At this time, uh, Minecraft, uh, Minecraft Glenna, we will also introduce to them some of the assessment tool that can be used by teachers to the students. Yes. So we will introduce to them this one. I will uh, navigate to my PowerPoint. Okay, thank you so much for sharing my uh, screen on. All right. Uh, can you now see my screen? Uh, Minecraft Champ Glenna? Yes. It's this All right. <laughs> All right, so. There you go. So I will play the video now. So first, you click play once your Minecraft has the starter screen and go to view library. So you click view library and go to how to play. All right, click how to play as a beginner and click start here. So you click start here and after that, proceed to the camera and portfolio. So in other words, we have this tutorial a video on how to use yes let's click create world on how to create uh, and how to assess our student using Minecraft education edition so those three lesson plans that we have just presented a while ago uh it has this element in their assessment so first uh, you will be given instruction on how to and what is this tutorial all about about the camera 
uh, the portfolio and the book and quill. Uh, book and quill, it's like the old version. Yeah, this is the camera. You click, right click, you right click the camera and then it will take a selfie. There you go, smile. Uh, there you go, that's my face. <laughs> All right, so activity completed. Proceed to the next one. And this one uh, is an instruction for us to continue to the next area. And then right click on the camera to take a picture. All right, so let's find uh, right place like this one. That's an NPC. Ayun. So let's take a picture of the fountain or the horse. Ayun. So those pictures are stored in your camera. Later, you will see how to uh, get those pictures. Yeah, and we will talk to the NPC. The NPC will tell us something. Once you're done, take pictures, press I'm done. All right. So make sure to take plenty of pictures. Though you need them later, you can take more pictures by pressing not yet. All right. So let's click. Uh, done. That's why it's activity complete. Then let's proceed to the next one. So that's how uh, camera functions inside the Minecraft world. So, so mahilig naman tayo magtitake ng picture. <laughs> Alright? So, yung picture naman ay ilalagay natin sa portfolio. Yun nga, no? Dami ating selfie ngayon sa Vincent. Nakakatawa nga. Yun. So, we, we can now open our portfolio and we can see our pictures placed in the portfolio. And you can now label that, for example, horse. And waterfalls. Ni pala yun fountain waterfalls pala yun. So this one also is me, my selfie. And then export portfolio to convert that one into PDF file. Yes, you heard it right. It's PDF file. So let's talk. About, yes, let's uh, get some instruction for the NPC or the non playing character. So let's click done because we're done. All right. So activity complete. Congratulations. And let's proceed to the next one. Okay, so there's an instruction on the board. It's the book and quill. So we're done with the camera portfolio this time. The last one is the book and quill. So what is book and quill? Uh, yes, uh, you, you can combine both text and pictures. And like portfolio, yeah, up to 50 pages. And navigate between pages and click the arrow on the right side. And like portfolio, you can only store pictures there. But in the book and quill, you can, yes, combine put a description on this picture and there you go so something like that all right so click done and if you will click sign uh yes if you will click sign remember that you cannot yes edit that uh book and quill anymore and you can add title to that book and export that into pdf file and submit that to your teacher for example teacher has those quests or challenges inside Minecraft world and the teacher wants you to submit your output. So the teacher only needs this book and quill in PDF file or format. So sign and close, it means, so if you can see that one, no? So it's a book and quill has this something like glowing uh, part. Yes, uh, there you go. So if it is blinking, it means that it's already closed. All right, so it's signed already. There you go. So the activity is complete. Okay, so we can, and you can, yes, you can add text, so on and so forth. Okay, let's keep this part right here. There you go. And it's signed and closed. Okay, so lesson, lesson completed. There you go. So that's all for the uh, camera portfolio and the book and quill okay so i will now turn you over to the next uh, video demonstration by our minecraft champ rubilin minecraft champ rubilin take it away yes 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 thank you so much sir Glenny. and uh we learned a lot from your presentation right uh minecraft champ glenna mm -hmm. yes <laughs> so as you can see, as uh, as I've told you a while back, all of these tutorials are available in the uh, library in, in Minecraft Education Edition. So kung hindi nyo man po na nakita lahat, kasi syempre um, yung time din po namin, very limited. So yes, makikita yes, nyo yes. pa rin naman po yung mga tutorials mismo doon sa ating Minecraft Education Edition. So moving on, Cap Ruby. Yes, okay. Let me have this one. Punta tayo sa ating chalkboards naman, no? 
Okay, so here in our chalkboards, uh, before we can only see chalkboards in our classroom, in our four wall classrooms, right? But don't you know, here in Minecraft Education Edition, we have chalkboards. Hindi lang isa, but there are three types. Educators can use three different sized chalkboards to communicate learning goals or challenge students with problems to solve within the game. Yes, it's within the game. That's one of the assessment tool built in in Minecraft Education Edition. All right, so here there are three types of chalkboards. As you can see, uh, we have slate. And the size is one by one. Ayan. Then the second is the poster, having the size of two by one. And of course, the third board, which is two by three. All right. So for you to learn more about it, let's, let's watch this video. Okay. All right. So... Nasaan na ang video? Alright, uh, balik ako. Dali ha. Parang nag-log lang siya. Okay. Alright, so while waiting for that video to be played by our Minecraft champ, Rubilin, so here is also a quick announcement to everyone. If you would like to uh, join our Facebook group and uh, Facebook page. Uh, we will show it to you later, everyone. And join the community of gamers turn to learners. So that's our advocacy and initiative in the at ICTS at the unit, the game based learning team. Turn your gamers to learners so let's help our learners uh very ano na po sila no uh, lulong <laughs> kung baga uh, that's their language already let's speak their language and do not um you call that neglect that one because uh kids right uh, now nowadays are uh, on games and of course uh even during our times. Or, so, tayo ay naglalaro. And uh, maganda po yung experience sa paglalaro. Grabe po, no? Yung learning natin kapag tayo ay uh, naglalaro at natututo. Right? So, at this juncture, I will turn you over first to our, kasi speaking about games and uh, gamers turn to learners, I'll turn you over to the next part, which is eSport. So, what is eSport? Our Minecraft chub, Glenna, will tell us more about eSports using Minecraft Education Edition. God. Yes, yes, yes. So, Minecraft, uh, Minecraft uh, eSports. Right, so sharing my slides. So, Minecraft eSports as game-based learning. So, ito. This is actually new, so associated with, with the pedagogy of play, situated learning and mastery learning. So my topic presents the research evidence for the benefits and limitations of using video games for learning and addresses issues such as assessment of game-based learning through formative and summative approaches. Now... To, to sum up also some of the topics that were discussed a while back. So what is game-based learning? So game-based learning as part of our team, this is described as using games in educational context to reach educational objectives. So as you can see here in the umbrella, so nandito yung strategy, reasoning, judgment, makikita po talaga natin ito sa digital game-based learning natin. Adopt, this is adoptive and it will also help in uh, creative thinking. So as explored in the introduction presented by uh, Ma'am Rubilin, so there is yet to be consensus on whether esports should be considered as a sport. So nakikita naman po natin from, from, from the teenagers that add the generations that we have now, 
So very busy po sila sa mga esports na yun, like uh, ML, Dota, or whatsoever. So we in the game-based learning team, why not uh, give it a try also in Minecraft Education Edition to start Minecraft esports. Ang kinaganda nito, bakit nga ba Minecraft, di ba? So, ma ma madidiscuss ko ito dito sa aking topic. And from an educational perspective, however, sport isn't the only discipline we can consider uh, drawing from in the curriculum. So, because of the intrinsic nature of esports as being facilitated through playing video games, so, its wider foundations are based in both uh, game-based learning and at the same time, sport education. So, yun nga, in this section, makikita natin kung, kung paano natin makikita or may illustrate yung mga skills and competencies that can be delivered through esports when the theoretical and the pedagogical um, foundations are rooted largely but not exclusively in digital game-based learning. So, being able to conceive esports as having wider curriculum, curricular foundations than just uh, sport education, it opens up a wide range of teaching possibilities, including social and emotional learning, 21st century skills, and digital citizenship, which are, which are broadly uh, applicable across a range of curricular areas. And so for the pedagogy of play, so the value of play in children's learning has long been established in developmental education. So play is an innately intuitive um, medium for children's learning and can enhance uh, childhood development from 33% to 67%, supporting the growth of a wide range of skills, including intellectual, like problem solving, logic, IQ, social, emotional, and physical, and development, physical developmental. So while plays viewed differently by educators, as children become older, di ba, nagbabago naman talaga yung nilalaro ng mga bata ang, sa, sa, sa generation natin ngayon. So often, it's being con considered also distracting or, di or diverting from more serious uh, learning and assessment activities. Pero alam po natin that g uh, our children uh, do not stop playing. Part na po yan ng, ng uh, buhay ng isang bata. Okay? So, instead, yun nga po, why not as parents, we give a platform or an avenue na mas matututo po yung mga anak natin in, in such a way that they have fun. Ayan? So, makikita natin yung creativity ng mga anak natin in, in a platform which is very safe for them like using Minecraft Education Edition, okay? So, for the benefits of game-based learning, yes. Una sa lahat, cognitive benefits. Ayan. So, yung cognitive benefits natin, video games have been shown to improve attention, focus, and reaction time. So, pangalawa, yung motivation natin, yung mga video games natin, it's, it, it inspire intrinsic rather than extrinsic motivation. So, yung pangatlo natin, we have social. So, gaya na sabi namin, yung advocacy namin kanina, we are going to make your your children na gamers into learners. So, your gamers are able to transfer the, the pro-social skills that they learn from multiplayer gameplay to peer and family relations, which is yun nga yung nakikita rin namin sa mga family namin while we play Minecraft Education Edition. And pang-apat, we have social and emotional skills. So games induce positive mood states and help players develop a effective response to failure, manage their complex emotions, and, rela and, and relate it to others. So... Yun yung kinaganda ng Minecraft Education Edition. So, for esports and Minecraft Education Edition, so why are we introducing Minecraft Education Edition for esports? 
So, educators who are familiar with esports or yung mga nanonood ngayon na may mga anak na naglalaro ng esports, so won't be surprised to learn that Minecraft isn't a typical esports title. So, in fact, if you ask students if they've ever used Minecraft to play esports, sasabihin nila, they're likely to tell you that that's not what Minecraft is for. Yes, kasi hindi pa naman, hindi pa usually kasi um, nakikilala dito sa Pilipinas. Pero in other countries, yes, ginagamit na po nila or ginagawa na po nila itong uh, Minecraft Education Edition as part of uh, an esport. So there are three very compelling uh, arguments for using Minecraft Education Edition. Okay, so we have Una, Minecraft is a familiar digital environment for students. Yes, kahit nga yung mga anak po natin, alam na po yan. Halawa, Minecraft Education Edition has been specially designed for learning. So, may kita nyo po dito sa platform na meron nyo, meron nyo nasusunog. Anong gagawin ng bata pag may mga nasusunog, may mga namamatay na crops. So, pag-iisipin nyo yung mga anak natin kung ano ba dapat yung mga gagawin. Okay? And then Minecraft, number three, is the ultimate tool for developing creativity and creative thinking. Okay? So, why Minecraft Education Edition? So, gaya ng sabi ko kanina, it assists educators in building STEM skills, unleashing their creativity, and engaging students in collaboration and problem solving. Ayan. Minecraft helps educators meet students where they are, uh, inspires deep meaningful learning across subjects. Ayan, so ginagamit din ito for social emotional skills and inspire project-based learning. And it offers special features designed for educational use, including assessment tools and classroom multiplayer that allows learners to work together in immersive game environment. Okay? So for the esports and Minecraft, meron pa lang pong tatlo. So to, to support this immersive uh, to support this, the Immersive Minds LTD developed 13 different Minecraft worlds that enable to organize competitive and collaborative play in your classroom. So the worlds are categorized under three genres. So yung una, make and model. We have make and code, and then the creative clash. So ang ginagamit pa lang po so far ngayon is the make and model. So this is a series of uh, that will be first in Minecraft Education Edition is eSports package to be released and then you make and code net and, and creative flash will be coming soon. So ito po yung ating make and model. So meron pong anim na arenas. Arenas po kasi yung mga, mga tinatawag nating immersive Minecraft environments dito. So we have the Pirate Cove, BCBs, Gold Rush, the 3D Print, Space Race, and the Splat Racers. Now, for Minecraft Esports Setup Guide, kailangan nyo lang pong i-download yung mga materials natin in this link. So, HTTPS, uh, click that immersiveminds.com slash Minecraft um, Edu Esports and now you have to save it to your device. And then, you have to open it, click play. Pang-apat, you have to import it into your device and then you have to locate kung ano po yung gagamitin ninyo um make and make and model na na world okay and then number six yan you click on the world you wish to copy so ang ginagawa po namin dito best practice namin dito you have to copy first the world kasi kapag nagkamali na po kayo baka mamaya wala na kayong copy so you yeah. have to copy first yeah. yes and then Ayan, so you have to create the copies. And then, syempre, reminder din po sa lahat ng mga nanonood na once you plan to, to uh, for example, upgrade your laptop, make sure to, to back up or you export the worlds being created by your children. Kasi once na nag-upgrade nag po kayo ng laptop ninyo, nag-reformat nag kayo, hindi nyo po na-back up yung mga worlds nyo, hindi na po yan maibabalik. Okay? Okay? So, for the acknowledgement, so I thank the eSports Educator Framework, uh, which is created by Immersive Minds LTD. So, ito po yung mga names ng mga gumawa. No, 
e-sports educator framework na na-share na material sa amin from line learning and development, from our training in in the Minecraft e-sports leader, and at the same time, Microsoft, Minecraft, global uh, educa uh, educator community. So I thank you for, for the materials you've been shared to each and every one of us. Yan. So, yan lang. Ayan, so natapos natin yung about Ayun, so, ayun. So, we still have <laughs> one. We still have five minutes left. And we will consume that five minutes to our announcement. By the way, we will be giving away three redeemable codes. So, you can redeem it in the education.microsoft.com. Pakitype nga ka para mabilisan na sa comment section. Yes. And I will, yeah, and we will share it to you the, yes. the code. Yes, <laughs> mabilisa din yung pag-share. All right, Ayan before na. we go back to our uh, plan. So this one, so that you will also receive. What what will you receive by uh, redeeming the code? The code uh, will give you an international certification from uh, Microsoft Education Community or Educators Community. So in your comment section, you can see it there. That's the link. All right, that's the link. And following that link, all right, so maganda na po. Copy-paste na lang yan. Yung aming mga codes. Tatlong codes po yan. From Minecraft Champ Glenna, Minecraft Champ Ruby, at Minecraft Champ Glenny. All right, so I will send the code now. That code will give you each code will is associated with one uh, international certificate from uh, Microsoft uh, International. So you, you can see in the comment section the codes that you can redeem in that link uh, that our Minecraft champs uh, sent it a while ago. So in www.education.microsoft.com. And of course, another one. So we would like also to announce this one, our future plans. So what are the future plans of the game-based learning team? So Pakibasa, uh, Minecraft champ Ruby Lynn. Yes, yes, yes. So we are so excited for you to be with us for our future plans. Yes, we have this. Minecraft professional development, yun yung nasa top. Second, we have uh, this one to teach back. All right. And of course, the third one, uh, GBL learning site. Yes, the game-based learning learning site. Of course, we will uh, announce uh, further details about this one. And fourth, we have the Minecraft Showcase School Program. And fifth, Minecraft Student Ambassadors. And sixth, Minecraft Esports, uh, the one that uh, Minecraft Champ yes. was uh, telling about a while ago. All, All right. right. So in details, we are so grateful to our... Uh, contributors, we have the line learning and development <laughs> and Microsoft Philippines. Yes. And even we have consulted our team in order to, for us to form what are the, the future of game-based learning in the Department of Education. So in details, we're so grateful uh, from uh, our Miss Isang Sigismundo or Miss Clarissa Sigismundo and Miss Grace Co for this deep ends. Five, uh, also contributing to our deep ends five-year game-based learning Plan goal. So we have three. So Cap Glenna, can you read? Yeah, so we have three. So number one, we have to ignite interest in STEM and support foundational skills in coding and that ed uh, K to twelve learners through Minecraft Education Edition. So foster creativity, collaboration, and problem solving among K to twelve deaf ed learners and support educators and school leaders with the right training program and skills roadmap so they can effectively and uh, confidently implement GBL in the classroom. All right. So in details, po ito po yung aming uh, in details, but it's still a proposal. So once approved, we can roll it out yes. and we can see you in the next uh next line of our uh, projects and activities with game-based learning all right so at this time also here's the link for if you were not able to follow the instruction on how to install so that what minecraft installation so bit.ly minecraft installation and if you want to post something about this uh, uh session just use the hashtag what is the hashtag caprobelin Hashtag play, build, learn, and hashtag Minecraft PH. 
Okay. All right. So we have sent a while yes. ago the the links, Cap, uh, Glenna and Cap Rubilin, the FB page. Uh, follow us in our FB page and join our FB group for teachers. And we have also reserved some FB group uh, no, for learners. So distinctively, so we have for learners and for our educators. And uh, don't forget, all right, no, to thank the following. Again, we will also consume. It's already time. So we will also, in general, thank you all for participating in this Vincent 2.0. And thank you to, to all our partners and to all our Minecraft champions in the Ed Philippines. And uh, yes. in behalf, yes, of our team, Minecraft Champ Ruby Lynn, Minecraft Champ Glenna. Yes, yes. thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Yes. <laughs> and, glory. and great things That's he has done. Best. All right. Thank you so much. And God bless us all. God bless us all. Miss Glenna Tagibaw sa ating napaka-enjoyable and substantial session for this afternoon. Alam mo, partner, ang dami kong natutunan tungkol sa oh, Minecraft yes. Education Edition. No? Kasi akala ko before, puro games lang, makatulad sa kapalit mo. Well, you know what? I just want to share this sa school namin. Meron isang teacher talaga na even ginawa niya ng Minecraft yung school namin. At ang nakatawa talaga. At uh, ginagawa rin pala niya ito as part of his teaching, teaching di ba? Sa klase. And then, kasi hindi sa math teacher. So talagang napakagaling. At parang kung kaya ng math to, kaya rin pala ng ibang studies gawin to. Tulad na panood natin kanina, ay ginawa na sa AP yun. Alamin pa nilipunan, yes. di ba? So, I mean, with Minecraft Education Edition, I mean, napakadami po natin paggagamilan nito. At sana ma-explore na natin to. You know, we have kids at school. Yes. Uh, we have, sorry, we have kids at home. At talaga, mas pinipili nila talaga na mag-explore sa Minecraft. And you know, ang gagawin ko pag-uwi ko sa bahay, I'm going to uh, download this Minecraft Education. I'm gonna let them explore more about it as well. Actually, ako din, Sir Mike, no? kasi itong um, game-based education natin ng uh, Minecraft education, hindi lang siya for fun, no? Pero doon din ay maraming skills na natututunan ng mga bata like collaborative learning, oh, critical thinking, sige, ang mga no-hoods sa kanila. Ayan, siguro, siguro it's also time that we say hello to our dear teachers na hanggang ngayon ay nanonood pa rin sa amin. Hindi lang maraming 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 salamat. Mga taga-luzon na teachers natin, pati ang mga taga-bisayas at Mindanao. Okay. And yes, siguro, uh, before natin sila batiin, I think, magnan mo nang patagalin, let's introduce our first, uh, our last speaker. And for our final topic for this afternoon session, it is going to be another interesting topic, especially for our teachers, because this is all about Mobile apps development for teachers. You are correct, um, partner. No, alam naman natin na almost everyone ay my mobile devices na. Pwede nilang gamitin whether you're a student or a teacher. Right. And imagine what mobile application you can create to make learning more fun and more accessible to all. Diba, since you already have, so since you already have the phone with you, why not make it more functional by yes. creating your own apps? At I'm sure, mas matutuwa pa ating mga estudyante at teachers kasi nasa application na siya, na-download na lang nila. Kaya naman, Sir Mike, huwag na tayo magpatumpik. Tumpik pa, sino ba ang next speaker natin for this? afternoon session. All right, our speaker is that she had earned 17 years of teaching experience and became a subject area coordinator in computer education in a private institution. Sir, my hindi lang yan. She took up Bachelor of Secondary major in computer education at Pasi Catholic College. She has finished Master of Arts major in instructional technology and currently taking up Doctor of Philosophy major in technology education at Rizal Technological University. And in addition with that, she also joined in 2020 as Deputy TV teacher broadcaster teaching the subject Edukasyon sa Pagpapakatao or ESP for grade 8. Consequently, became part of the Deppet Equali Tutor ESP Grade 4 and Grade 7. She is also at Deppet at Open Educational Resources National Core Leader and also became Microsoft Education Ambassador and Google Certified Educator for Levels 1 and 2. Grabe, ang ating speaker for today. Yes. At kilalang kilala natin siya. So dear 
be sure we will present to you our next speaker for this session, Miss Joy Jesus. Hello, Miss Joy. Isalma sa iyong pabati na may ngiti sa aking mga labi. Magandang magandang hapon sa inyong lahat sa ating mga kaguroan mula Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao. So, mag-umpisa na tayo agad-agad dahil alam po na excited na rin kayo na matutunan ang uh, mobile app development. Um, konting-konting sharing lang. Recently lang po sa ating Itulay Summer Camp, Sinare ko din po itong uh, mobile app development sa ating mga kids. And believe it or not, 7 years old lang itong mga batang ito, pero nakapag-produce sila ng output. Kaya naman, I am encouraging you, my dear teachers, to try this uh, app inventor na i-introduce ko po sa inyo this afternoon. Um, disclaimer lamang po, ang akin pong i-discuss ngayong hapon, ay kinakailangan ng internet connection. Oops! Ayan, wag muna tayong sumimangot. Alright? Kahit kailangan ng internet connection, dalawang bagay, my dear teachers. Pwede nyo pong pakinggan muna ang mga step-by-step -step procedures ngayong hapon and then mag-team replay po kayo para sa inyong mga hands-on activity. Or kung meron naman po kayong laptop or gadget na magagamit, and at the same time, mobile phone na katabi nyo po dyan habang kayo po ay nakikinig sa ating inset, eh pwedeng-pwede nyo po itong masundan. Alright? So, ngayong hapon din po, ini-encourage ko ang lahat na mag-chill habang nakikinig po sa akin ngayong hapon. Pwede po kayong mag-merienda ha? habang nakikinig. At dito sa lugar namin, nangangamoy pizza. Kaya feeling ko, excited na excited na talaga ang lahat. Kaya umpisahan ko na. Ayan, so, Sir Ken, let's have our first slide. Alright. So once again, I will discuss the mobile apps development for teachers. Okay? Specifically, ang ituturo or isishare ko po sa inyong hapon ay yung tinatawag po nating app inventor. Alright? So, my dear teachers, sabi dito sa first slide, this is a great tool to learn mobile development for beginners. Yes, my dear teachers, kahit ngayon nyo pa lang po may encounter itong app inventor, believe me, makakapag-create po kayo ng inyong simple output at ang output nyo na yan ay makikita nyo po sa sarili ninyong mobile devices. Okay? So, yun nga lamang, gaya ng aking nabanggit, eh, kailangan po ng browser at ng internet connection sa akin po um, i-demonstrate ngayong hapon. But once again, ipapaalala ko po, chill lang po dun sa ilan na sa cellphone lang po nanonood or nakikinig. Pwede po kayo, actually, I am encouraging you to have, ay, ang saya, to have a team replay habang nakikinig po dito po sa aking presentation. Alright, so my dear teachers, app, ah, okay, thank you sir. App Inventor is an open source web-based system developed by Google. But now it is maintained by Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Alright? Um, Doon po sa ilang mga computer teachers, so alam po nila yan, so yung open source. Pero dun sa ilan, hayaan nyo pong ibahagi ko sa inyo. Kapag sinabi po natin open source, ang ibig sabihin, ito po ay libre. Okay? Ma-access po natin sa internet. At my dear teachers, kapag meron na kayong naumpisahan dito sa app inventor, since nakasave yan sa tinatawag nating cloud, Pwede nyo po yung balikan. Pwede nyo pong ituloy. O, oh, hindi ba? May mga bagay pa rin na pwede nating balikan. Let's go. Alright. Here is a diagram showing paano nagpa-function si App Inventor. Okay? So, as I've mentioned, yung nakikita nyo po sa itaas, yan po yung cloud. So, basically, dyan na i-store yung mga information or dinesign ninyo kay App Inventor. 
kay ating mentor, my dear teachers, meron tayong two major parts. Okay? So, first ay yung tinatawag natin na app inventor designer. Okay? So, dito tayo nagde-design. Dito tayo naglalagay ng buttons, ng labels, or yung iba pang interface na nakikita natin sa ating device. Okay? That's the first one, app inventor designer. Okay? So, mukhang uh, excited na magmeryenda ang uh, aking... Uh, tagapindot ng presentation. Relax lang tayo. Mahaba ang ating oras. I love you, Sir Ken. Now, let's go to the second major part. Okay? Shout out sa mga kababayan namin sa Batangas na dyan sa Kalaka at syempre sa Talisay, mga Ramilo. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Ito na, ang, ang tinatawag naman nating Blacks Editor. Okay? This is where you assemble program blocks which resemble puzzle pieces that controls the behavior of the components in your application. Yes, my dear teachers, before, bago makapag-create ng apps dito sa ating gadget, alam nyo ba na dapat eh marami pa kayong application or marami pa kayong higher program na kailangang matutunan. Pero, Dito sa App Inventor, alam nyo bang para lang tayong mga kids na naglalaro since i-match lang natin at uh, parang puzzle nga ang program nito. O di ba? Sana all may kamatch. Aran, let's go sa next slide, Sir Ken. Ayan. So, eto na po ngayon. <laughs> okay. Ayan. So, eto na po ngayon ang itatype natin sa ating browser. Okay? So, since the latest version is App Inventor 2, so type in your browser, my dear teachers, doon lamang po sa may pagkakataong makasunod sa step-by-step -step procedure, itatype nyo po ito sa browser. Ngayon, kung kayo naman ay nakikinig lamang po o nanonood sa inyong cellphone, note lang po muna. Balikan nyo po ito later. Okay? Pero doon sa ilan na makakapag-type ng uh, location na to sa inyong browser, come on, my dear teachers, subukan nyo po ito. Aba, wag tayong magpatalo sa mga estudyante natin. Kung sila marunong mag-mobile legends, sisiguraduhin natin na ang teachers ay marunong ng mobile app development. So, let's bring it on. Type it on your browser. ai2.appinventor.mit.edu.ph All right? Um if ever po first time niyo mai-encounter si App Inventor, ang isang kailangan po din dito, pasensya na po hindi ko nabanggit, kailangan po ng Google accounts. Pero my dear teachers, pwede nyo pa rin pong magamit ang inyo pong DepEd account. Okay? Pero dito po sa EdTech, eh, um, binibigyan din po namin kayo ng kalayaan kung ano po ang inyong pwedeng gamitin. Okay? Sa atin pong buhay, marami tayong mga options. Options, options, options. So, as you type this one, dito na po kayo magda-divert sa screen na ito. Okay? Now, since... First time natin na encounter si App Inventor, mahalaga na malaman muna natin ang kanyang mga parts. Adi po ba? So, my dear teachers, hayaan niyo pong uh, um, ipakita ko. So, nakikita po yung aking screen? Nakikita po yung aking screen? Ayan. Maraming salamat sa sumagot habang nagme-merienda. Love, love, love. So, Ang una po, kapag mag-create kayo ng project, actually project ang ginagawa niyo po dito. So, dito po, mag-click kayo kay project and then you will click start new project. Okay, so maganda na sa buhay natin ay laging meron tayong uumpisahan. Kapag mag-create kayo ng project name, make sure wala pong space. Okay? So, kung I, ang IATF, nire-require po tayo ng social distancing, dito po kay App Inventor, 
make sure wala pong space ang inyong project name. Okay? So dahil uh, inspired ako sa so naaamoy kong merienda this afternoon, ang project name natin guys ay Pizza. Pizza Coke. Ay, sorry, ano pala yon? Joke lang. Pizza Soft Drinks. Okay, mabilis lang yon. Sana hindi nila na, na, na ano, ayan. Sana hindi nila naranig. So nakita nyo, two words ang aking project name, pero wala siyang space. Okay? So here is my uh, project name, Pizza Soft Drinks. Sana all nakakapag-merienda. Then click OK. Yan. So, there you have it, my dear teachers. Meron na po akong bagong screen para sa aking mobile app using App Inventor. Ngayon po, um, i-explore po natin ang parts. Ano po? Para dun sa ilan na baka mamayang gabi ay mag hands on na. Hayaan niyo pong i-guide ko po kayo. Ang nakikita nyo po sa inyong screen ay yung tinatawag po natin na App Inventor Designer. So gaya po yung nasabi ko, dyan po tayo magde-design. Ito naman po yung second major part. Okay? So ito po, pag kinlik po itong button po dito, so here, nandito na po tayo kay Blacks Editor. So ito po yung sinasabi ko, na gagamitin po natin pang program doon po sa ating na-design. Of course, kung wala po kayong dinesign sa ating screen, wala po kayong ipoprogram. That is why, importante na tayo po ay mag-create muna or tayo po muna ay mag-design. Okay. Ang unang-unang ituturo ko sa inyo ay yung tinatawag natin na background color. Okay? So, alam naman natin yan na once nakatingin tayo sa ating screen, iba pa rin yung impact, hindi ba? Kapag meron tayong background color. So, saan yan makikita? Dito, my dear teachers, sa properties. Uh, recall ko lang po, ah. So, here, sa left side, ito po yung mga tinatawag natin na user interface. Ito po yung mga component na pwede natin ilagay sa screen. Okay? So, madami po yan, pero siguro yung mga madalas na ginagamit or yung mga first time na magkikreate ng kanilang app, yun po muna yung isashare ko sa inyo this afternoon. Of course, eto pong nasa center, ayun pong ating screen. So, dyan po tayong magde-design. Katabi ng screen, it is divided into two parts. Yung tinatawag po nating components at sa ilalim, ayun pong media. Okay? Kapag sinabi po nating components, dyan po mag a kung ano ang mga ilalagay natin sa screen. What I mean mag a ay yung pangalan ng mga components na ilalagay sa screen. Next, dito po sa extreme right side, Ito po yung tinatawag natin na properties. Ito pong properties ang gagamitin ninyo para po ma-modify ninyo ang mga components na nailagay ninyo sa atin pong screen. Okay? Ayan. So naalala ko tuloy ang aking mga chutis nung nakaraang Italy uh, Summer Camp. Hello sa inyo. Hindi ko mabanggit sa isa. Um, pero alam ko na nakaka-relate kayo ngayon sa tinuturo ko. Pinuturo ko na rin sa inyong mga teachers. Kaya magpapatagisan o taga, magpapagalingan na kayo ng output ng inyong teachers. So, let's start with the background color. So, ang background color, my dear teachers, ay makikita nyo po sa properties. Okay? So, nakikita nyo po dito, by default, it is color white. Okay? Pero syempre tayo, mahilig tayo sa makulay. Kaya papalitan natin siya at hindi lang basta white. So, ikiklik niyo yung box na yan at pipili kayo ngayon ng desired ninyong um, background color. So, halimbawa, ang gusto niyong background color ay pink. Yan. So, color pink na po ang makikita ninyo na background color ng inyo pong screen. Okay? That's one. Next, 
lalagyan naman po natin ngayon ng content ito pong ating screen. Ang unang ko pong ituturo sa inyo ay yung tinatawag na label. Ang label, um, ito po yung magde-display ng text sa inyong screen. Okay? Ngayon pa lang, pinapaliwanag ko po, magkaiba ang label sa text box. Para hindi kayo malito. Kapag label, jaan po isusulat or magde-display ang mismong text. Pero kapag text box, jan po kayong mag-i-input ng value. Okay? So, label po muna tayo. Hindi po muna tayo mag-i-input ng value. So, from label, nakikita nyo po, nasa user interface, you will simply drag it to your screen. Alright? So, nakita nyo po, pagka-drag ko sa screen, nadagdagan po ang aking components. Label 1. Okay? Ngayon, Paano ko babaguhin ang nilalaman ng label? Titingin po kayo, my dear teachers, sa properties at makikita nyo po dyan yung word na text. Dyan nyo po siya papalitan ng content. So, papalitan nyo po ng nilalaman si label. Siyempre, kailangan meron itong content. Talagang mahirap kapag walang label. So, maglagay tayo ng label. Um, let's say, teachers. Teachers. Ah, may naisip akong magandang label. Honesty. Honesty is the best policy. Agree ba kayo, teachers? ba? Honesty is the best policy. Iba pa rin kapag totoo ka. Or iba pa rin kapag uh, um, bukal sa iyong kalooban ang mga sinasabi mo. Iba, iba pa rin kapag uh, totoo ka sa ibang tao. Alright. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, ang text ko para sa aking screen ay medyo maliit, hindi ba? Well, kung hindi nyo napapansin, eh palalakihin po natin siya ngayong hapong ito. Paano natin siya palalakihin? So, alam niyo yan, kung kayo ay gumagamit ng uh, Word, PowerPoint. So, doon tayo sa font size. So, click niyo po yung label and then makikita niyo po sa properties yung font size. So, kung naliliitan po kayo, pwede niyo po siyang palakihin. Let's say, mga 20 ang font size na gusto ko. So, kung sa tingin niyo medyo maliit pa at gusto niyo bigyan ng emphasis Ang honesty is the best policy. So, lakihan pa natin. Gawin natin 30. Ayan. Kapag sa tingin nyo, sumobra siya sa screen, adjust. Ayan. Diyan tayo magaling, mga teachers. Magaling tayong mag-adjust. Alright. So, meron ako ngayong label. Meron na ngayong background ang aking screen. Ang susunod na isashare ko sa inyo, dear teachers, ay yun pong button. Okay. Ang button, eh, madalas ginagamit po ito para kayo ay malink into another screen. Okay? Hayaan nyo po munang mag-insert ako ng button. Okay? So, kapag mag insert po kayo ng mga components dito sa inyong screen, maganda na ilagay nyo po siya sa tinatawag nating horizontal arrangement. Okay? Dito po sa user interface, Meron po tayo diyang tinatawag na layout. Yan. So, under layout, iba-iba po yan. Meron tayong tinatawag na horizontal arrangement, vertical arrangement. Pero ang advantage po nito ay nailalagay natin ang mga interface sa tamang lugar. ba? Madalas, dapat lagi pala tayo ay nasa tamang lugar. So, I have here horizontal arrangement. And I will drag it to my screen. Okay? Now, ulitin ko po ah, ang ating po mga layout o kagaya nitong horizontal arrangement ay magagamit nyo po para pantay-pantay um, ang inyong mga components na meron po sa screen. So since meron na akong horizontal arrangement, lalagyan ko na siya ngayon ng button. Okay? So ganun pa rin po. Ida-drag nyo po yung button, papasok sa inyong horizontal arrangement. 
Okay? So, maaari nyo naman pong ayusin ang mga properties nito. So, pwede nyo pong uh, ilagay siya into center. Okay? So, kung gusto nyo po, nasa bandang itaas. Nasa discarding nyo na po habang kayo po ay nagde-design ng sarili nyo pong uh, mobile app. So, ganyan po yung mangyayari. Um, maganda rin po na habang ginagamit nyo po si mobile app, i-explore nyo po unti-unti yun pong properties na makikita nyo po dito. Okay? So, maasahan naman tayo mga teachers dyan. Magaling tayong mag-explore. Creative tayo sa mga bagay-bagay na ini-introduce sa atin. Okay. Next, eto pong button na to ay pwede nyo rin pong palitan ng pangalan. Okay? So, ikiklik ko po si button para hindi naman text for button 1 ang makikita dyan. So, hahanapin niyo po sa properties yung um, text for button. At pwede niyo po siyang palitan ng word na next. Ayan. So, once you press enter, mananotice niyo po na hindi na po text 1 for button 1 ang nakalagay kung hindi yung word na next. Okay? Ayan na. So, meron na tayo yung button. Pero sabi ko sa inyo, magagamit nyo to to transfer to another screen. Of course, kailangan meron mo na kayong additional screen. Kaya naman, dito sa bandang itaas, katabi po ng screen 1, nandyan po yung button kung saan kayo mag-add ng additional screen. So, click nyo po, add screen. Alright. Pag nag-add screen po kayo, mahalaga pong malaman ninyo kung ano ang pangalan ng screen. Bakit? Since ito po ang gagamitin ninyo sa program na ilalagay natin later. Okay? So, for the sake of demonstration, at para hindi rin tayo malito, i-as-is muna natin na screen to po siya. Then, click OK. So, there you have it, my dear teachers. Loading siya. At ito na, ang screen number 2. Okay? Okay? Subukan naman po natin na sa screen number 2 ay uh, instead of uh, uh, background color, bakit hindi natin going picture ang ilalagay natin as our background? Okay? So, pwede rin po yun, my dear teachers. Tingin lang po sa properties at meron po dyang background image. So, tayong mga Pilipino, mahilig tayo sa mga pictures. Kaya gusto rin natin na maging background background to. So, ikiklik nyo lang po itong part na ito ng background image and then upload file and then choose file and eto ngayon, kukuha ko ngayon ng pictures. Ay! Yan ang hindi na. Okay. So, feeling ko meron ako isang picture dito na pwede nating magamit. Ayan. Asensya na po. Pang example lang. So, Ako ulit yan. Then, click OK. And then, dito po sa background, map mapapansin nyo po na masyadong malaki si picture. Kaya hindi siya nang so isang uh, magandang ngiti ulit para sa inyong lahat. Para sa screen too, my dear teachers, ang ipinakita ko naman po sa inyo ay background image. Ngayon po, what if meron kasi akong button sa screen 1, papunta kay screen 2, pero paano ko babalik doon kay screen 1? So, once again, ako po ay maglalagay ng isang button. Okay, so okay na siya muna sa ganyang position. And papalitan ko naman po siya ng text at gagawin ko pong back. Oh, diba? Para tayo ay makabalik kung saan tayo nag-umpisa. Alright. So, kung mapapansin niyo po, dear teachers, meron na tayong dalawang screen. Here is my screen 1 and here is my screen 2. Ngayon, i-introduce ko na po sa inyo si Blacks Editor. Dito po tayo gagawa ng program. So, nakita niyo na yan kanina katabi ng designer. So, click Blacks. Okay? Ngayon, ang gusto nating mangyari sa button natin is 
Matransfer tayo kay screen number 2. So, paano natin yun gagawin? So, ikiklik nyo po yung button 1. Okay. My dear teachers, pwede nyo rin pong i-rename itong mga components na ito ha. Kung halimbawa masyado na kayong maraming na ilagay na components, para po hindi kayo malito, pwede nyo pong i-rename yan. May iksila. A, B, C, D. Pwede po yung ganun. Okay. So, ang gagawin po natin is to transfer to another screen. Kaya naman, idadrag ko po ngayon itong when button one click sa aking working environment. Okay? So, ito po yung part. Ito pong white na yan. Diyan po tayo magdadrag ng ating pong mga program. Diba? Sabi ko sa inyo, drag and drop lang. Hindi ka, yung, siguro yung ibang mga programmers makaka-relate no, na yung mga program na ginagawa natin before, isang tuldok lang ang kulang, isang semicolon, naku, hindi na yan magraran. Pero dito sa App Inventor, drag and drop lang tayo. Okay? Kaya lagang uh, napaka-user-friendly lang nito, lalo na sa mga first time na gagamit ng App Inventor. So, babalik ako kay um, button 1 at hahanapin ko ang kanyang kapares when button 1 Ano ah, so no when but okay open another screen Ha Tampo hanapin natin ang kanyang kapartner Ayan. So, um, by the way, dito po sa blocks, meron po tayong iba't ibang mga built-in blocks na pwede mong gamitin. Of course, depende po sa iyong function. So, meron po tayo dyang control. Ito po yung aking unang gagamitin. Since ang hahanapin ko po na block, naka-partner nito is open another screen. At ayaw niyang sumunod. Time first. Ayan. O, oh, diba? Ganyan lang. Pag kayo ay nandito na kay Blocks Editor, nag-oops. Teka. Subukan natin ulit. Tayo ngayon ay uh, nagkakaroon ng mga technical happiness. Ibahin naman natin. Huwag na puro technical difficulties. Minsan na uh, kailangan makiisip din tayo ng mga paraan kung paano tayo... Um, Paano natin magagamit ang mga difficulties pagdating sa internet? O di ba? Ayan niyang makisama ngayon. Behave the demonstration on oh, live data via satellite. Hi. O di ba? Ayaw niyang makisama. Alright. Pero dahil tayo mga teachers ay uh, matyaga, laban lang. Eto na, hahanapin ko na yung partner niya at hindi na naman siya nagpakita. Open another screen. Oh, di ba? Wala. Ganun talaga. Ayan na mga pagsubok sa ating buhay. Dahil tayo nga ay connected sa internet. At uh, nahihirapan tayo na ipares ito. Dahil uh, ito na ang ating kalaban dito sa demonstration na to. Anyway, um, ganun talaga, no? So kapag live at itong uh, um, internet na ang ating kalaban, eh, mahirap po talaga. Pero susubukan ko pa po sa huling pagkakataon. Uh, by the way, kapag meron po kayong maling uh, blocks na nailagay dito po sa ating screen, meron po dyan tinatawag na trash or garbage bin. Ayan. So pwede nyo pong i-delete yung program. Okay? I-shoot nyo lamang po dyan. Okay? So, make sure sa inyo pong mga basura, dapat laging nasa tamang basurahan. Balikan natin si Boton. Baka pagbigyan na ako ng internet ngayon. So, ikiklik ko ngayon si uh, Boton 1 at para matransfer ko na siya into another screen. Okay. So, ulit. When Boton 1 and then yung control niya hahanapin natin, open another screen, since lilipat tayo sa ibang screen. Ayan. Pero ayaw niya pa rin sumunod. Okay. Sige. Babalikan po natin yan. Magpunta muna tayo, my dear teachers, sa part na makikita na natin 
yung dinesign natin dito sa ating designer papunta sa ating um, cellphone. Okay? Kung kayo ay marunong ng copy-paste, eh ganong format lang din yan. Okay? Dito sa ating ginawa kay App Inventor, meron po dyang button sa itaas, yung tinatawag po nating build. Okay? Then, meron din tayong tinatawag na connect. Ito pong connect ay maaari nyo pong gamitin kung nakapag-install kayo ng Android or SDK sa inyo pong computer. Meron po tayong tinatawag na emulator. Kapag sinabi po nating emulator, ito po ay magraran, makakakita tayo na nagraran na program na um, kung ano yung makikita natin sa ating device. Okay? But in our case, let's try na i-build itong uh, makikita natin sa ating uh, uh, App Inventor Designer. So click Build and then choose Android App. Ayan. So, kapag dinownload natin ito, kailangan nandun pa rin po ang inyong patients habang dinadownload. Okay? By the way, this app inventor po ay meron din pong offline version. Okay? So, for the meantime po, ang dinemonstrate ko muna ay yung uh, online since kulang po tayo sa time. Pero, given a chance, eh, pwede ko rin pong i-share sa inyo ang offline version nito. Kaya, Part din po ito ng ating OER. Okay? So, let's go, OER! Shout out sa lahat ng mga national OER car leaders. Hello sa iyo, Sir Ricardo from SDO Santiago. Ayan na ha, naisingit natin. Alright, so, na -down ito, ito po, i-download ko na yung aking Pizza Soft Drinks app. Then, uh, dismiss lang natin ito. You also have an option na pwede rin pong QR code ang inyo pong i-download. Okay? Ayan. So, ha, sa pa, hindi siya na-download. Ayan. Sige, download po natin ulit. At uh, hintayin natin. Um, when we say uh, APK, my dear teachers, it refers to... Uh, Android package. Okay? So, Android application package. Alright. So, yan yung naging extension name. Okay. Now, meron din naman pong, uh, meron din naman po akong backup. Ayan. Kung sakaling sadyang hindi siya ma-download dahil nahihirapan nga po tayo sa ating internet, let me share with you guys an example ng uh, app na ginawa So actually, gusto ko rin po magpasalamat kay Ma'am Sarah Jane Contreras ng Palawan. Siya po yung tumulong din sa akin na magbigay ng mga uh, examples for our demonstration this afternoon. Pero dahil ayan, mabagal po at hindi siya nakikisama, so siguro po ipapakita ko po muna straight from my device kung ano po ang ating sample output. Ah, sir, I have here pala ano, um, sa aking presentation. Okay, so okay lang po from our presentation. So, ganun po, no? Um, meron po tayong mga pin-repair na backup para kung sakaling meron pong ilang ganitong pangyayari na hindi natin maasahan. So, mahalaga po na meron po tayong mga options, options, options. Okay, so okay tayo, sir. Meron presentation? O, yan. So, From my presentation po, okay, yung PowerPoint, sir, yung um, last three page siguro. Opo, medyo nahihirapan. Yan, okay. So, okay. So, ang nakikita niyo pong example sa atin pong screen ay uh, ginamitan po namin ni Ma'am Jane nung tinatawag po na uh, buttons. Okay? Kaya nga, my dear teachers, kapag nag-create kayo ng inyong uh, sariling uh, mobile app, eh, pwede nyo pong i-apply. Actually, ito yung pa, isa pa. Sir, yung next po. Yung uh, next example pa. Yung last, siguro. Ah, yan. So, okay lang, sir, kahit nag-play yung video. Okay. Sa example po na to, sige, sir, i-ano uh, kong, at, konti. 
Ya. Sige, sir. Pa-play ulit. Okay. Sa example na to, my dear teachers, ay uh, sinubukan po namin na ilink ang mga itulay episodes dito sa aming mobile app na ginawa. Okay? At yung last na slide, sir, yung... Uh, yan. So, tingnan nyo naman po. Ito naman po ang another example na ginawa naming app kung saan... So, sige, sir. Uh, i-back natin muna, sir. Balik natin dun sa una. Thank you, sir, Ken. Sa unang-una po muna. Ayan. So, as a teacher, pwede po kayong mag-create ng sarili nyo pong mobile app kung saan nakikita nyo po, ah. Meron po ako ditong four buttons. For quarter one, for quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. Pwede pong diretso na ito na maibigay nyo po sa inyong mga estudyante para sa kanilang guide. Sige nga, sir. Play po ng konti. Pag kinlik yung quarter one, sige, sir, post muna tayo dyan. Pag kinlik yung quarter one, you can insert buttons from week one to week eight. Okay? At tignan nyo po, kapag kinlik yung week one, ayan, sir, pakiklik, ayan. So, stop tayo dyan. Once kinlik si quick, ah, oh, sorry, si week number one, pwede ulit kayong maglagay ng tatlo pang buttons. Isang button para sa inyong module, isang button na pwedeng mag-link sa itulay episode ng subject na yan, ha, ng week na yan. And another link para naman sa inyong mga DepEd TV episodes. O, di ba? So, sinusubukan na po natin na uh, i-integrate unti-unti ang atin pong mga nalaman at natutunan since day one. Sige, sir. Subukan natin kapag kinlik ng mga bata yung uh, uh, week one na module. Sige, sir. Ayan. So, maglo-load iyan at there you go. Ayan. So, makikita ng mga bata yung kanila pong mga module. Once again, my dear teachers, huwag tayong ma-stress sa ating nakikita. Pero ito po kasi ay pinaglaanan ng oras habang ginagawa. Okay? Um, ang in-offer namin, ayan. So, nakikita nyo na yung module. So, makikita yan ng mga bata. Simula um, um, activities, objectives, Yan. So, lahat ng uh, content ng module ay makikita nyo dyan. Balik tayo, sir. This time naman. Sige, sir. Kapag kinlik naman yung watch or itulay episode, so, ganun din po. Direct na malilink ang atin pong mga estudyante sa mga um, itulay episode na meron po tayo. Okay? Also, the same, kapag kinlik naman ng ating mga estudyante, Yung third button, o oh, ba ang makasaysayang countdown ng ating mga webinars at ito like episodes. So, pag kinlik, sige sir, si uh, Watch Depth and TV episode. Ayan. So, ito naman. Connected naman. Ayan. Sa mga Depth and Ito like episodes. Okay? So, once again, my dear teachers, um, it takes time sa paggawa nitong uh, ating uh, ipinapakita. So, sa ngayon ay hindi ko lang po talaga maipakita ng buo dahil medyo kalaban natin si internet. But basically, um, yun po ang mga features. Ayan. So, ayaw, na, ayaw nyo talagang mag-download. Uh, mag, uh, anyway, so, ang ipinapakita po namin sa inyo or pinapresent po namin ay uh, isang option na pwede nyo pong gawin. Malay nyo po, someday, hindi lang kayo basta teacher, isang mobile app developer din po kayo. Okay? So, yan lang. Talagang nangyayari na kapag actual na demonstration na hindi nakikisama si internet. But, uh, I hope medyo nakilala nyo ng bahagya yung pictures ni uh, App Inventor. So, here sa ating screen, bukod sa background image, pwede rin po kayong mag-insert ng inyo pong sariling picture. Okay? So, paano naman po yon? Dagdagan lang po natin ng konti at uh, baka yung iba eh, nag-explore na dyan. So, meron po tayong tinatawag dito na image. So, si image po, once dinrag nyo po sa inyong screen, ayan po ang una nyong makikita. 
Once again, kapag nag-insert kayo ng image, madadagdag siya dito sa ating components at dito sa properties tayo, makakapag-upload ng ating picture. For those of you po na nagtatry na ng App Inventor, uh, kung meron na po kayong mga screenshot ng mga pre or previous pictures na nagamit po dito sa inset, pwede nyo pong i-insert yan at masaya po akong makikita excuse me po, ng inyong output na mismong selfie ninyo or groupie dito sa inset ang inyo pong ilalagay. Same procedure din po kapag mag insert kayo ng background image. Click nyo po itong picture and then kung same picture po yung gagamitin ninyo, so click nyo po yung picture and then click OK. Pero the same, kung gusto nyo po ng ibang pictures, pwede nyo pong i-open muli sa inyong drive para makapag-insert kayo ng inyong pong picture. Kung mapapansin nyo po, eh, masyadong malaki itong image na nailagay sa aking screen. So, doon po ulit papasok ang ating creativity at ang ating patience habang tayo po ay nagde-design dito kay App Inventor. So, sa height, um, pwedeng maglagay kayo ng percentage para sa pixels or para sa percent. For example, maglalagay muna kayo ng 50%. Okay? Kung sa tingin nyo masyado pang malaki, i-partner nyo dahil partner yan, si width at si height. Okay? Then click OK. Ayan! So, na-shoot na yung aking picture or yung aking image dito sa screen. So, once again, my dear teachers, for those of you na nagtatry nitong App Inventor at meron kayong mga um, tinatawag natin na uh, selfie or groupie dito po sa ating Vincent 2.0, yan po ang subukan niyong i-insert and i-upload or screenshot ng inyo pong output sa DepEd um, EdTech Unit FB page. Yun po ay doon lamang sa meron pong nagawang output or nakasunod ngayong hapon. Uulitin ko, kung hindi man po nyo nasundan ang step-by-step -step procedures, pwede nyo pong i-replay ito pong part na ito para makapag-share po kayo ng output sa amin. Okay? Next. So, um, ayan. So, yung mga ilang uh, um, part po kasi talaga ng palette, eh, medyo matagal pong uh, maibabahagi sa inyo. Siguro um, kaya medyo ano tayo, medyo hindi nakisama sa si internet, nararamdaman ko magkakaroon ng part to ito. Okay? And with that, ay uh, nagpapasalamat po ako sa pagsama niyo sa akin ngayong hapon. Alam ko po na hindi madali na tumutok sa inyong mga gadgets na maghapon. Lalo na po yung ganitong oras. Aminin niyo po, nung face-to-face -face pa tayo, di ba, yung mga estudyante natin, kapag last subject na, makikita niyo nag-aayos na ng gamit, nagpupulbo na, hindi ba? Pero ako, nagpapasalamat po ako dahil pinili niyo pa rin po na makasama kami ang um, EdTech Unit, ang um, uh, Vincent 2.0 ngayon pong hapon. Ayan. So, Muli, maraming maraming salamat po sa pagsama niyo sa akin. Bigyan niyo lang po ako, bibilisan ko po. Siyempre, gusto ko po nga i-recognize na ang akin po nga um, skwelahan, alam niyo po, hindi ko po matututunan ang App Inventor kung hindi dahil sa Pateros Catholic School. I know meron din tayong mga um, private school teachers na nanonood ngayong hapon. So, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Muli, sa lahat ng uh, um, teachers, Non-teaching personnel administrators ng Pateras Catholic School. Good afternoon sa inyong lahat. Gayun din sa aking mga naging teachers sa Pasig Catholic College. Hello sa lahat ng mga teacher broadcasters at shout out sa lahat din ng mga tao behind the DepEd TV episodes. Hello sa mga lahat ng DepEd Etolite Shooters. Madami yan. Hello sa inyo. Mabuhay lahat ng Etolite Shooters. Buhay na buhay ang Volunteerism Act sa Etolite. Hello din, syempre, sa aking mini-me na si Sofia Velasquez ng Nueva Ecija. Hello sa iyo, anak. Good afternoon sa lahat ng uh, mga teachers from Pasig City. Of course, SDO Pasig sa Mangahan High School, Sagad High School. Diyan nag-aaral yung mga anak ko, syempre. 
Patrick City Science High School. Hello sa iyo, um, um, Sir Charlie. Good afternoon po. Up. Thank you rin po kay Dr. Charmaine Ariola. Alam niyo na yan. At sa akin po mga earrings, God chill you on me, Jess. Siyempre, thank you, thank you so much sa pagsama niyo sa akin. Maraming salamat sa suporta. Um, Boss Alvin, thank you sa aking mga kids. Alam niyo na yan. Happy, happy, let's ito. Happy, happy birthday sa aking sister ngayon. Ayan na, hintayin mo ako. Kailangan mabusog ako ngayong hapon. Maraming, maraming salamat muli. Abangan niyo po. Feeling ko magkakaroon talaga tayo ng part 2. Ako po si Mrs. Joy Hervasio Salazar. Huwag na huwag niyo pong kakalimutan sa lahat ng inyong gagawin, pagmamahal at kabutihan sa kapwa ang laging iisipin. Maraming salamat po! Thank you so much! Once again, thank you so much! Once again, thank you so much, Mom Joy G. Salazar, for that very interesting topic about developing mobile apps. Alam mo, na-enjoy ko siya, no? Kasi yung app inventor pala, it will also help you as a teacher na ikunit mo kung ano yung klaseng application ang nababagay sa learning styles ng iyong mga estudyante. Yes, hindi lang quiz. Pero sabi nga ni Mom Joy kanina, parang it might take some time. Pero imagine if you have all the modules there, if you have all the videos, all the mails, the bells, di ba parang magagamit mo to for the whole school year, even for the following year, and so much, so many years to come. Yes. Kaya, I mean, this is also another very interesting topic na pag-aralan natin eh, for the divisions, school base natin, magagamit at magagamit talaga natin. Yun. Grabe I, itong day 3 natin. So, pinusok tayo ng mga different resources no, na magagamit natin sa teaching and learning process natin sa virtual classroom natin. Yes, and I'm sure marami kayo natutunan kayong araw na to. Kaya gusto ko lang batiin ang bawat isa, di ba? Yes, siguro this is the best time for us to shout out or to greet everyone who's watching right now. Kung kayo ay Tagaluson, pwede bang pa-heart button dyan? Ayan, I want to see some hearts. Kung kayo ay mga teachers or anybody watching, from Luzon. Sige po. Ayan. What about from? Kung ikaw naman ay taga Visayas, pwede bang bigyan mo ko ng like sign lahat. Tingnan natin kung may mga like sign, no? Yes. From Visayas, grabe naman talaga. And from Mindanao, Sir Mike? Yes, from Mindanao. Sa so, mga taga Mindanao dyan, I'd like to greet, syempre, yung mga kababayan ko sa Kalipuna, Bukit Nol, malapit ko sa mga Del Monte Plantation dyan. Doon na ka talaga ang kandolo ko. Ayan. Hello po sa inyo lahat. Ayan. Kung taga Mindanao ka naman, ang ibigay mo naman sa amin ay care sign. Yes. Yeah. So, so, Grabe, nakikita natin no, ang dami natin reactions from Zon, Visayas, at Mindanao. Kaya mga minamahal namin kaguruan na hanggang ngayon nakatutok pa rin dito sa ating virtual NZ 2.0. Maraming maraming Marami, marami salamat. salamat po sa inyo lahat. And do you want of to bring anyone? Meron tayong mga pa-shoutout dyan. Siyempre yes. po, diba? Gusto po namin i-shoutout ang uh, Ramon Nagsaysay Pugaw High School headed by their principal, Dr. Ruby De Jesus and belated birth anniversary to former president, Ramon, Ramon Nagsaysay. Special mention niya ng ating uh, uh, from that and central office ni Ms. Divine De Vigno. And yes, I'd also like to greet Hume's advisor of Inatua National High School, Surigao del Sur. Shout out din po sa SDO Marinduque, especially those from Marinduque National High School. Hello po sa inyan from Ma'am Sheen. And also, shout out nga pala sa uh, Pag-asa National High School TLE Department sa Division ng Dasmarinia. Meron pa tayo from Quezon, uh, SDO Quezon Province. Uh, we would like to greet din po na Dr. Felisa Quezada from Quezon National High School from Ronald Abisamis. I'd also like to greet Sir Elmo Baga Wisan, School Ordinate City National High School Principal Sir Romel Milliones, teacher uh, ng Belisa National High School Mathematics Department ng Bagong Silang High School from Ma'am Janet Bardulias. Happy birthday to Ma'am Prechie the 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 Dois of MBA SHS Unit 1. Hello po sa inyong lahat at happy Wednesday. Siyempre, pati rin na rin ang mga um, kapatid natin teacher broadcaster from Negros Oriental Occidental. Um, si Sir James Descutado and of course, si Sir Rafi Berina, no? nanunood pa rin sila hanggang ngayon. Yes. Meron pa po doon, partner? Meron pa, madami pa. Hello sa mga Jeff Natics Shots from NCR, Region 5, Region 11, at mga international din daw. Ayan. Meron din tayo 
from Morning Breeze Elementary School, Mrs. Jocelyn Navarro, pinapabati po yan ang inyong teacher na si Felisa Maganda. Ma'am Marites del Castillo of the Canlao Gregorio National High School, Margie Clario Cabral of Calacao, Batangas. Hello po. Meron din dito from Doña Rosario High School, SDO um, Castle City, Dr. Grace Darimat, pinapabati po kayo ng inyong teacher na si Mr. Neil John Talapia. Happy, happy birthday to Ma'am Preci de Dios of MBA SHS Unit 1, Kaloocan. Pinapabati din po kayo ni Ma'am um, Kaburay from Justice Cecilia Munoz Palma Senior High School. Alright, Ma'am, uh, before we carry on with our shoutouts, wait, wag muna kayo maalis mga teachers. Yes. Because remember, during day one and day two, I meron kayo ang uh, uh, okay, pain ng mga selfies. Kanina diba? lang, bros, kami mga teachers, nakita namin kung gaano talaga katatalino ang utak ng ating mga guru ano? So kung kayo ang magpo-post ang video ngayong araw na ito, huwag kayo limutang gamitin ang hashtag na Vincent to Day 3. Again, okay. kung magpo-post po kayo si ating mga different social platforms, don't forget to use our hashtag, hashtag Vincent to uh, Day, day three. 3. Kasi mahalin nyo, kayo ang ating kayo mga highlights tama. bukas. So panoorin natin itong video na to. Tignan natin ang mga creative ng ang uh, creative I'm excited actually. I want to see it myself too. Kaya ko sa'yo, sa kung ano po kaya makikita natin sa darating na buka sa day 4, di ba? Well, siguro, uh, we can actually do some more shoutouts, di ba? Yes, sir. Alam ko, talagang nakikinig yung mga gusto magpa-shoutout pa rin. Sige, simulan mo na. Okay, una-una siya ng Kulong Maxley National High School, Ma'am Shena Pamanibal Principal, at sa lahat ng mga nanonood mula sa SEO Pampanga. Sa pamumunan ng kanilang SDS, Edgar Domingo, pagbati po yan mula kay Teacher Broadcaster Lynn Escoto. Hello, shoutout nga po pala sa mga teachers ng Alameda National High School, SDO Iloilo, from Lori Valeriano. Hello po. Yeah, mag -anap yan. Also to all the teaching and non-teaching personnel of Bungan Elementary School, SDO QC, headed by Ma'am Josephine Aranas, Ma'am Tan, Ma'am Sheila, Ma'am Lot, Ma'am Grace, and Ma'am Jessica from Ma'am Lisa. Binabati din po namin ang The Garden National High School, Taisan District. Ganun ang kanilang mga head teachers, master teachers at ang kanilang principal. Ma'am Luwena or Basilang, galing po yung pagbati kay Ma'am Bernadette Alday. Alright, uh, Emilia Ampalada Poblete National High School. Hello po sa inyo lahat dyan sa Silang Cavite from John Ross A. Vidal. Pakulpista Pagtobos, 
National High School shoutout daw from the Division of Negros Occidental from Ma'am Mary Grace Yap, Lumuntan. Of course, nandito rin ang ating mga teachers of Siriaco PT nga elementary school, especially to Dr. Judith and Saavedra. MPASA, Unit 1, SDO Kaluokan, Principal Emmanuel C. Aguilar, Head of Math Department, Teresita M. Benito, the math teacher, especially Ma'am Raquel De La Cruz. I'd also like to shout out nga pala ang Dagata National High School, Taisan District, and also the head teachers and master teachers po. Hello po sa inyo lahat. Santa Cruz Elementary School, SDO Cagayan, and lastly, SDO Bacor City, hello po, Nate, Sir Nathan, headed by Ma'am Mary B. Jay Dinglasan, Principal 2. Hello. And of course, hindi rin magpapauli ang ALF TV broadcaster natin, si Ma'am Ka and Sir Peter ng SDO Camps. So, hindi rin magpapahuli si Teacher and Charge Viva Carillon from Amado T. Reyes Elementary School from SDO Mandaluyong from Sir Vance. Yes. yes, I'd like to greet my brother watching all the way from Japan right now. Hello, Kenneth Malariado. I stay safe there. Also, SDO Gentry. Hello, Ma'am Angie de Ocampo. And also, Das Marinas Elementary School. Uh, Principal, um, also, and for Ma'am Janet Perpala, sorry. Principal Dr. Thelma A. Pasco, Dr. Juan A. Pastor Memorial National High School, Ipaan, Batangas, from Ma'am Jennifer De Jesus. Hello po. Hindi rin magpapahuli po, no, yung ating mga taga-Puerto Princesa City National Science High School. Uh, pinapabati po kayo ni Sir Jerson Orbiso. And also, nandito din po, um, pinapashoutout po namin, uh, mga taga-Balara Elementary School teachers, head and master teachers po, from Ma'am um, Ed Perjo po. Ayan. We'd also like to greet Santa Lucia National High School of Asturias North District, Cebu Region 8, SDO Pasay, Maricaban Elementary School, ACGH College, John Ryan Pagador, Mark Mapula of SDO Albay, hello po sa inyo, Balingasa Elementary School, Nancy Annie B. De La Paz from SDO QC, Mamburad Center Central School from John Kenneth Almasen, Division of Cebu Province, Musogon Integrated School, hello po. SDO Zambales, Subic District, Kawai Elementary School. Of course, hindi rin magpapauli ang mga high school English shooters of Ito Life. Of course, itong pagbati na ito ay galing sa inyong program head na si Mabay Sevilla. And meron din pa po pinagpapabati na idol natin dito si Furter Natix. Plus, Foster Natix daw. Bagong ano po ito. May bago na naman, ha? Of course, shout-out din po sa ating ESP family ng Florentino Torres High School po. Pinakabati po yan ni Sir Jenny Boris. And of course, nandito rin po ang mga taga-Liliu uh, District Head po ni Dr. Weaver Galite and ang mga school principals po pinapabati po ni Ma'am Roma Punong Bayan. Shoutout din po of course sa MBAS Unit 1 SDO Kaloocan Principal, Mr. Emmanuel Silagular, head po ng kanilang bag, department galing po yan kay Ma'am Divine. Yes, Benito Aguino Junior High School under Ma'am Christina P. Kaloocan Tabla sa SDO Kaloocan. Also, hello to SDO Bukol, Batuan National High School teachers. Hello po from Ma'am Liza. And Northville L6 Elementary School teaching force headed by Ma'am Josie Gretel, District of ba Balagtas, SDO Bulacan from Rochella. Hello po sa inyo lahat. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the Facebook, uh, the admins of Teachers Teacher Be Like. Hello po sa inyo. Hello po sa Teachers Be Like. Thank you, thank you. Let me good vibes sa sila. Yes, like meron din po tayo nagpapabati dito, no? Nag-18 years siya sa, you know, sa service po na magiging guro. Si Ma'am Che, um, Che Mendoza, from Paranaque National High School, pinakabati niya ang kanyang principal, na si Sir Jerry A. Lumaban. Sir, um, good afternoon po and welcome to dito. Alright, Estancia Central Elementary School faculty and staff headed by Dr. Jerry Tingson, Principal 3. Also, now one elementary school, the Bau Occidental Division. Yes. And also from Joanna Pavia National High School, SDO Iloilo. Hello po sa inyo lahat, lalo na daw sa mga mathematics department. Hindi rin magpapahuli ang Ariel Natics from Malaysia and Australia po. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Grabe. And of course, nandiyan din po ang mga taga-ramon magsaysay high school, senior high school po ka person, si Sir Sir Anthony Victor Cabantac, na the teachers ng Malokan Business High School with their head, Sir Tears of Pete De La Cruz Principal 4, as a members ng top and Philippines from Daniel Pew Tameta Mavic Coordinator. Ayan, so I think, uh, are you gonna? Or you still have more again? Marami ba tayo? Shout out din po daw sa mga taga-quality assurance ng MAPE and DLA uh, Department po ng DEPED TV from Ma'am MC Kausare. Meron pa, of course, from Malolos po, um, SDO Malolos po, um, Balayang Elementary School from 
teacher broadcaster Cherry Lapena. Meron pa po, Tagum Barrio National High School SDO Kalaokan, Mapa Report with him. Birthday niya ngayon ang isang Mapa Report with him. Alright, happy birthday! Sir Nestor Bulosan, happy birthday po from Richard Fabia Puyan. Alright, Pangmatan Elementary School, Gataran Central District, SDO Kagayan. Hello po sa inyo lahat dyan. DJ watching from Nasubuki Senior High School, Charmaine, hello daw po sa mga STO Antique. Yes, I'm from Sibalong po. Pa-shoutout po sa mga teachers ng Panukuan Elementary School, Agone South District. Shoutout from Rhea Parian National High School, Kamalik Albay. Sir, pinabati rin po pala natin no, ang mga taga-president of Corazon Elementary School. Pinahalong po sa principal, master teachers and head. And of course, pinababati po yan ni Ma'am Melvinine Cruz. Alright, ito si Mary, Mary Chris Cultura, Nato Elementary School, Rosario East District, SDO Batangas, Carmen watching all the way from Sorsodon Province, hello po. Okay back. sir, another from Quezon City, hello daw po to all teachers from Bago, um, Pag-asa Elementary School, especially the great three teachers, um, principal po nila dyan, si Dr. Julian Arellano from Mr. Brian Pato. Alright, si Carl naman, teachers from Arena, Arena Blanco National High School sa Buanga City. Hello po sa inyo lahat dyan sa Busao National High School at Maribohok District. And also, sino pa ba? Nagpapabati rin po pala ang mga teachers, no? Nang sabi nga natin, hindi lang pong public. Of course, meron din tayo mga different organization tulad na teach from the Philippines. Yes, hello po sa inyo lahat. Sa Philippines Center, nagpapasalamat po kami sa pagtutok niyo po sa amin dito. And lastly, I'd like to say hello to SDO Wang Pangasinan, Malasiki National High School sa Mathematics Department. And hello, Sir Waymar. Ayan. Okay, nagpapabati din po sila mga Marlin, Moyo, Luling, Pilyora, Hedilin Alawi, Dali Osorio, Maria Liz, Vargas, Norilin Joy Bruno, Mga Pabin Sir, pinapabati po ito ni Mga Pamela Amor. Yeah, and from Mount Florence, pa-shoutout daw po sa mga guru na Emilia Ampalada Poblete National High School, lalo-lalo na po sa mga Filipino and English Department, mabuhay po kayo. Okay, meron din po tayo papabati dyan from Mato Department ng Marikina High School. Binabati po namin kayo no, sa kanilang principal na si Bang Imeldo Olvida at Department Head na si Sir Donato Santos. Pinapabati po kayo ni Ma'am Rowena Rosales. Yes, Teacher Broadcaster King Albert Nervesa also want to say hello to Rizal High School teachers of SDO Pasig. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Pinapabati po from the Valicious High School SDO QC from Ma'am Angela Mahidlawon. And from Tom Juanito Madio from SDO QC San Bartolome High School. Hello po sa inyo lahat. English Department of San Bartolome by Sir Abraham Abraham Kulo. Binabati din po namin si Ma'am Jen Garcia, SDO Bacoor, Ligasi Elementary School, ang kanilang principal, si Dr. Rosemary Kubang Ba. Yes, teacher broadcaster also want to say, uh, teacher broadcaster Japia Venerable of Pandi North District with their PSTS, Dr. Sita Alpisa, Hi po sa lahat ng mga teachers ka kakarong Bata Elementary School headed by Ma'am Benvenida Bacos. Ganun din sa kanyang husband daw, si Michael. Hello po sa inyo lahat dyan. Pinapabagi din po ang One Sumulong High School Kubao headed by Dr. Giovanni S. Garcia and to all teachers and staff. And welcome to the new principal, Dr. Bonifacio Capulitan from your teacher broadcaster, Ruby Rose Abuan. And lastly, binabati ko ang master teacher 2 ng SDO Manila, Jamil Carbajal. Ayon. Hello po kay Jen Garcia, SDO Bacoor, Ligasi Elementary School, with principal, Dr. Rosemary Kubambang. So, well, ang dami pa natin actually gusto i-shout out, but, you know, we, we want our teachers to rest na rin. So, there you have it, teachers. And again, we are now done with our day three virtual in-service training Thank you po dahil kayo, hindi kayo bumitaw at sinamahan tayo, kaming lahat sa buong araw na ating day 3 ng INSEL. I am sure that you learned a lot from our speakers today. And you know what, aming mga mahal na kaburuan, wag na wag po kayong bibitaw sa amin dahil day 4 and day 5 pa yes. tayo. And before we officially good say goodbye, we just want to remind everyone to answer the evaluation form with regard to our program and speakers for today. Kung hindi man po kayo maka-access ngayon, do not worry if you cannot access it now because this virtual insight in our LMS is opened up until 31st of January, January. 2022. Alright, bukas po ay abangan naman natin si Sir DJ Sanchago at si Ma'am Jennifer De Jesus as they host the Vincent 2.0 Day 4. O, teka, may pahabol pa daw. Sabi ni Sir Paz, happy birthday sa Region 7, Region, uh, Regional Director, Dr. Salustiano Jimenez. Happy, happy birthday, Sir Salustiano Jimenez.
Sa huli po. Ah, yes, sabi pa sabi sir. Ang ating head po ng DepEd uh EdTech, si yes, sir, sir Mark. Mark. Hello po. Well, huli po po si Michael Angelo Maleriano from General Emilio Aguinaldo National High School, Division of Imo City. And I am Miss Mary Ann Garcia Bihan from Bagusilang High School, Division of Kalaokan. Thank you very much. Give safe, safe. and God, God bless. bless. Goodbye, everybody. See you again.